It doesn't get much better than this. The Rio Grande rivalry from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Two teams that know each other well. They've played 110 times, and they're going to get after each other here today. Now we go to, down to the sideline. As you look at the Aggies coming out onto the field here, they're fired up. The run out here for the Lobos. Both teams on the field. They're ready for this one. Our man on the sideline is Mark Stout. Mark, what do you have? Hey, Brad, we've talked about the game. It's the Rio Grande rivalry. But what does this game mean to New Mexicans? And by New Mexicans, I mean the two head coaches in this game. After all, Doug Martin has been in Las Cruces for close to 10 years. Bob Davey got to Albuquerque in 2012. Now, Martin told me this is it in New Mexico. There are no pro sports. This is the game. And these two teams have been battling for state bragging rights since 1894, which technically is incorrect because New Mexico didn't become a state until 1912. Doug Martin has been embraced by the people of southern New Mexico that he calls hardworking, blue collar, and family oriented. And Bob Davies stressed to me, there is a pride involved in this rivalry. And he said it eloquently like Bob can say. He said, look, if you live in New Mexico and you choose to go to college, chances are you're going to one of these two institutions. And as life progresses, chances are you're going to live, work, and play across from next to another Aggie or another Lobo. And that pride just continues to grow. 225 miles separate these two schools. It's a straight shot on I-25, a three-hour drive. But when it comes to the rivalry, it's the 121,365 square miles that encompass this state, the fifth largest in the union, New Mexico, guys. These two teams certainly know each other well. Thank you, Mark. And there is the acting head coach, Zaga Tuatele, and he's filling in for Bob Davey, who's still out. Bob Davey will be next week. He'll be back on the sideline, but Tuatele's done a nice job in these first couple of games. And on the other side, Doug Martin in his seventh year for the Aggies. And he's got this program headed in the right direction, Seth. What a nice job and, and really creating a great staff of, of guys that played for the school as well. Talk about going in the right direction and, and whenever you can come out and play against a type of talent that they started this season with at Wazoo and at Alabama and San Diego State, they're getting better. Donovan Murphy toes this one, sending it out of the end zone all the way back through. So it'll be a touchback at quarterback for the Aggies. Josh Atkins, a red shirt sophomore. He's got good size. You see there, 6'2", 217 pounds. He puts it up a lot. This is an air raid offense. He's got a lot of control at the line of scrimmage said, and he is not afraid to sling this ball. He isn't, and, and I, I feel like he has a total understanding for what they're doing offensively has total autonomy of the offense, can change plays out there. Captain of this team, the unquestioned leader, redshirt sophomore from Spring Branch, Texas, in the shotgun. You're going to see so much of this from the Aggies. And a handoff right away. Hundley gets tripped up from behind and taken down. A great start there. Kobe Hearn with the tackle from the backside. He's unblocked. You see just zone read. and. Hearn with the chase down, comes off the back end, reads his keys, and no one gets a chip. Too much speed from the backside. Second and long here for the Aggies. Out of the shotgun, Atkins looking down the field, over the middle, it's intercepted! A turnover, here come the Lobos, headed the other way. Can they take it all the way? Touchdown, the Lobos! Jarek Reed the second with a pick six. What a way to start this game. Home crowd going crazy here for New Mexico as that's their first interception of the season and they take it back to the house for a touchdown. Well, they're trying to work the backside and hit the skinny post route. It was good coverage. Receiver falls down on the route, Brad. And Johnny on the spot, Reed the second, was standing on the hash like he's supposed to. Comes off and electrifies the crowd. Extra point is up and in. 43 yard interception return here. Atkins had time. And again, going over the middle, you said it there. Nicholson falls down. And then look at the convoy. Everybody knew just what to do. Reed waiting for some blockers, setting them up there, and then walking in. And it's just a really good job. And that, there's nothing 
you could do there as a QB. It's good coverage on the route. Reed sitting at home. Comes off the middle of the field and, and eyeballs it. And a huge, huge start. For teams that are struggling to score points, these are the type of plays you need early on. Jarek Reed getting the start with Johnny Hernandez and Nico Bolden out. And what a performance on the season six tackles. Again, that's the first turnover, first interception for New Mexico all season long. And just like that, they turn it into six points. A uh, young man from Olive Branch, Mississippi. As he's gonna have to get right back out there because the Lobos are set to kick off again. Donovan Murphy, 99 to tow this one. Huntley back deep. Jason Huntley has returned five kickoffs in his career. He's got it here. He's going to stay in the end zone. The keys to containment brought to you by Delta Fawcett said, what do you have here? Well, you got to not give up the bus play if you're New Mexico. You can't give up the big plays on defense. And New Mexico State, you've got to keep Tavaka Tuyoti in the pocket. Make him beat you down the field. There's been so many big plays in this game over the last few years. Both teams have to do a better job of containment, keeping, keeping the offenses in front of them, not allowing the deep shots. We expect a high scoring game. I'm not sure we expected seven points on the board with 14-21 <laughs> to go in the first quarter. But Atkins back at it. He's gonna keep it here on the zone read. And a nice chunk play there on first down. And a late flag comes in. So anytime he's sliding, you're going to have to lay off. He's giving himself up. And Dijon Rogers, I believe, is going to get the call here. These are the kind of plays that you can't allow or you can't have happen to. You've already given up a chunk play for nine yards. Late hit, New Mexico, with targeting. Number six, 15 yard penalty. Automatic third down, the play is under further review. John Rogers with targeting is a big emphasis there. Uh, Comes in late there with the left shoulder and arm up high. Yeah, anytime you go towards the head, but this is Nonetheless, first down, another completed pass here. The Aggies moving it down the field. Fast completion number 16. Jared Watt, 16, with the reception there. And Drew Dan, number nine, for New Mexico State is out. Got hurt in the first play uh, of the offense um, when the offense was on the field last week. So he is out with a wrist injury. So Wyatt is going to get some more action there. Number 16, a wide receiver. Flags down here. Eddie Shelton is today's referee. We see Max Wildheit right there as he finished the thought after the call. The false start up front. And you see they're trying to get Max Wilhite's trying to get the protection together with the front. Trying to trying to get everybody organized. And Atkins gotta be patient. Allow him to go through what he needs to go through and not call for the ball. They do go quickly here. New Mexico State back at it. This one just thrown away as he was facing pressure. Atkins able to get rid of it there. That's the thing with the air raid. You're going to run a ton of plays. You're going to have some, some drives where you're like, man, that was ugly. But then all of a sudden, you're going to strike, strike quick, have some big plays come your way. You just got to stay with it. Huntley up the middle here, breaks one tackle. Shifty, dynamic running back. He's out to the 25-yard line as they're looking to get into the red zone here. It's going to bring up third down, but a nice gain there. They use him more of a, a scat back, receiver, third down type guy that plays all three downs mostly. But you see his quick feet in the hole there. He is a dynamic, dynamic play. Third and seven here for the Aggies. Atkins going deep. He's going for the home run ball in the corner. Incomplete. It's knocked down there. Nicholson, the intended target. Reed was in the vicinity. We do have a flag on the field, though. It's in the backfield. They're going to be holding or personal foul. Roughing the passer, but I didn't see him go down. 
Tell you what, they missed an opportunity there. Unsportsmanlike conduct is the call going against the Lobos. So that's going to give them a first down when they had gotten the stop on third down. It was going to set up a possible fourth down or a field goal attempt. But now play with emotion, not emotionally. And, and we're seeing a few cases of that where the Lobos have hurt themselves. Christian Gibson with the carry there. He's still churning the legs and finally knocked down. Maybe a half yard gain. We'll see where they mark it. A host of Lobos there in on the tackle. Alex Hart, Jacoby Hearn, two leading the way at that linebacker position. Gibson and Huntley are the two backs that get the majority of the work for New Mexico State. Again, they're going quickly here, second and nine. That was a gain of one. Back to the pass, over the middle. Tight coverage there, too tight. The flag comes out, O.J. Clark was the intended receiver. Here we get Latavion beaten on the call. Clark just ran the little option route underneath. As he broke to the middle, was held. Defense, number 15, spot foul, first down. Third penalty of this drive against New Mexico. It is a spot foul. And just before he comes into our view right there, he's being held on the left side. They're gonna have the ball at the three yard line here. It's first and goal for New Mexico State. Adkins gonna keep it, he scores! Touchdown, Aggies! The answer from the offense after throwing a pick six, and Adkins rebounds, takes his team down the field, and tries, tries to tie things up. Right now, 7-6, we'll wait on the extra point. Well, for a guy that came in with negative 46 yards, and a lot of that deal with sacks and stuff, but used his legs on that drive at pivotal moments. Was able to keep things going, and early first down plays, getting outside and, and using his legs. Dylan Brown in for the extra point. That's up and in. And we are tied here in Albuquerque. Adkins bounces back after the interception for the rushing touchdown, seven apiece. Night was something to see as they have a big bonfire there. They burn a 20-foot high Aggie. I'm sure New Mexico State doesn't appreciate that. As we are tied seven apiece. There is the scoring drive, aided by three penalties against New Mexico's defense. Return here along the near side. And Shad Alexander knocked out of bounds there. And we head down to the sidelines. Mark, how are things down there? Hey, let me quickly, quickly tell you about the New Mexico man, which was Andrew Shelley. You see him there, number 94, their place kicker, the uh, sophomore from El Dorado High School here in Albuquerque. Bob Davey instituted this back in 2012. He selects a player whose dedication, work ethic, team spirit, and unselfishness exemplifies the Lobos. I talked to Shelly today. You get to run out with the flag. <laughs> and he told me that his mom, who's his biggest supporter, actually went to Virginia. She's going to be there for the Liberty game next week. Marsha is from Liberty. She tried to change her flight, couldn't be here today, because he found out Wednesday, midweek, that he was going to be the New Mexico man. That's quite the honor for these guys. 30th New Mexico man overall here by Davey era. Tuioti completed pass there just along the line of scrimmage. You gotta, you gotta catch and get outside when you set that up and get what you get because you have no help from the inside. That's a great job of tracking and running to the football by the Aggie defense. Good accurate throw, quick throw, get him in rhythm. First look here, Tavaka Tuioti in the shotgun. This time it's a handoff. Davis gets hit hard, knockback stays on his feet, able to pick up a couple out to the 30-yard line. And it all starts with the quarterback. Tavaka Tuioti, you see the numbers there, redshirt sophomore. He's been here for a while, 
some personal matters, so he missed action during fall camp, didn't start the first two games, but they think he really has the most potential out of this quarterback group. Yeah, they do, and, and he's gonna have to be better on third down as they've been 15% this season on third down. Third and eight. Tuioti looks like he's changing the, the play at the line here. Davis in motion. He's gonna keep it, he's got a ton of room. He dives for the first down. He might be a touch short here, maybe a half a yard short. And he had some room, said, with the blocker out in front, and it closed quickly. The yeah, that was an excellent draw call. The play was a good play, but the defense's reaction was, was really good. Not sure on that spot. It wasn't a, a very friendly spot for him. Javon Ferguson, number seven there, one of the best defensive players in the country. And he's the leader of this New Mexico State's defense. He had the shot there, not get the knee to the ground. All he did was average 13.3 13 13 tackles a game a year ago, which led the nation. Yeah, he's impressive. We'll talk more about Ferguson as this game goes on. Tyson Dyer is going to punt this one under pressure, but spiraling a kick all the way down, and it's going to land in the end zone. O.J. Clark that time goes over. There is a flag down here. 63-yard punt there from Dyer. And really got that one to turn over, but let's see what the flag is. Illegal formation, picking team. Five men in the back, five yards to be added to the 20-yard line. First down. The Aggies will have it when we come back. Seven apiece here from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Three pounds, and he's got elite speed, said. When you look Paul Horning award watch list, that's to his, due to his versatility as a kick returner and out of the backfield, but it almost seems like they want to give him the ball out of the backfield more, not handing it off, but throwing it to him. Well, that, that creates matchup problems. If they can get him on the little angle routes, little option routes out of the backfield, it creates matchup problems for the defense. Pass complete down the field on the far side near the sticks. And as Atkins that time, Hit that back step and complete that pass to O.J. Clark. Well, you see, they, they put him, motion him out. He runs a little bubble route out on the sideline, but because who he is, you end up getting the look you want. You see, look at that window. I'm, I'm like 50. I think I might be able to make a throw into that window right there. I mean, that's a great design. You get the matchup you want, spacing for your quarterback to make a nice, accurate throw. And you could see why he hit that fifth step and then drilled that ball in there. He's going to keep it on the zone read. And he goes down behind the line of scrimmage. Alex Hart that time. This is a young man that is a leader. He got hurt last year. They really missed him a season ago. The heart and soul of this defense and the fifth-year senior is back with a medical redshirt. Well, I, I feel like they've always got a fifth-year senior dominant inside linebacker. You look back to Dakota Cox and some of the guys that have been through the program and done an outstanding job. But that was a great job of playing off a blocker and stopping the QB for no game. Incomplete pass here on the outside, and Robert Downs the third, and Atkins not on the same page as Downs was going deep down the field. and looked like Atkins expected him to come back on a comeback route or an out route, and that's going to bring up a long third down, third and 11 here with 8.05 to go in the first quarter. Home crowd getting fired up, trying to motivate this defense to get off the field. Adkins moves in the pocket and it drills one in there, complete for a first down. Downs this time on the same page as he was able to get beyond the sticks and get the first down. Well, basically it's the scissors route. You run the two underneath route, you run the sneak, and then you run the dig on the second level behind it. And he throws it on the back shoulder, just on the other side of Alex Hart, who can't get there. But see how he stops him in the hole right there? That's a really good throw, and he drills it in there. Beautiful throw and catch. Adkins quickly here to Clark on the near side. Makes one man miss briefly there as he gets wrapped up and taken down. Martin on the tackle. And Jacoby Hearn, 20, was also in there. And Clark's slippery on the outside, so yeah, that's, credit, a, that's a good job. Credit Martin and Hearn that time to get him to the ground on a minimal game. Plenty of space out there, and sometimes you want to raise up and get it in your athlete's hands and see if they can make a guy miss. Good open field tackle. 
Clark's been doing it for a number of years. You saw those numbers there, career receptions. Atkins gonna take off. And we get a couple here before he gets taken down. Horton that time. Dylan Horton, sophomore from Frisco, Texas, makes the tackle. What do you like most right now about Atkins? He's not, there's no negative plays happening. Even when something breaks down and what he wants to do down the field, either throws it away or he runs and gets a few yards, still turns out being a positive play. Third and four, pass complete beyond the chains, and another first down for the Aggies. This catch there by Isaiah Lottie. Slant route. You've got to go in there with some, with some courage. As you know, Brad, see him, he's the second man through. Fights it off and drags the defender for a few extra yards. Lottie from Denver, Colorado, Cherokee Trail High School. Another third down conversion for New Mexico State. Now Huntley, it's a fake to him. Adkins keeps it, and he's going to pick up about a half a yard there. Alex Hart all over the opposing quarterback that time, able to get him to the ground. And Mercilot's in position to block Alex Hart, but Alex Hart has decided he's not going to be blocked today on that play. He, just too quick, and you see Mercilot, number 54, gets out, and he's in position. He gets through, but he overruns it and leaves his quarterback out on an island. Hart with great instincts there. Now Atkins completes another one. Downs again, the recipient of this pass, and he gets it down to the 21-yard line, and they're really starting to click here offensively. And what, what routes are you seeing? Those deep in routes, those, those dig routes, toughest route to cover because you have to respect the vertical speed upfield, and then they snap it off and cross your face. If the ball's thrown on time and accurately, it's just hard to defend. And they just keep coming at you with the speed of this air raid attack. Huntley in the open field. Spinning and getting a nice gain on first down. Rogers in on the tackle for the Lobos, but more positive yardage on first down. Just methodically being patient, getting down the field, making the right plays. And what can you say about Atkins after that interception return for a touchdown? He's come back and just played solid. Going to drop this one out to the outside, and a flag comes flying in around the 10-yard line. Is that pass was complete? Tavis Abraham on the catch, but we'll see what the flag was. The ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to call it blocking or offensive pass interference. Personal foul, face mask, defense number six. At the distance to the goal, push down. Rogers, the guilty party. See the oh, face right mac there. there as they're trying to block him. And that's Nicholson there blocking, but Rogers got that hand up high. So I thought they were going to call offensive pass interference, but the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Huntley trying to get there, and he did not. Oh, we got hands up on one side of the field. The other official saying he did not break the plane. Beaten in on the tackle. The official at the bottom of the screen's got his hands up, and the official at the top of the screen was marking the ball short of the goal line. The closer official marked it short. If you look at it, he's laying on top of bodies, so there's none of his body is down. And right there, he squeezes it over to the top. That's, that's a touchdown. He's laying on top right as soon as the ball, right there, that's a touchdown. Great look down the line, perfect camera angle. And you can see why the official farther away put his hands up and said definitively, this is a touchdown. 12 play drive, 75 yards for the Aggies. And Huntley with his first rushing touchdown of the season. And a senior from Arlington, Texas. And back-to-back -back scoring drives for New Mexico State after they were down 7-0. Ball has confirmed touchdown, New Mexico State. Dylan Brown. The senior from Chandler, Arizona, left-footed kicker, is in for the PAT. And he puts that one up and in. 14-7, New Mexico State. 14 straight points here after they're down 7-0. What a bounce back for the Aggies. Jason Huntley finding pay dirt for the Aggies on that last drive. 12 plays, 75 yards. They picked up two third-down conversions to keep that drive alive. And, but there were two more penalties on the Lobos, so Lobos defensively got to slow them down and clean things up from the penalty standpoint. Big penalties, I mean, at that. One on a third down could have forced the punt. So the cleanup would absolutely be a must. 
Brown. Booms this one all the way into the end zone. Elijah Lilly back there. He's going to take a knee, and we're going to go down to the sideline to Mark Stout, who's got more on this star running back. We asked Doug Martin, the head coach, to compare Hundley to a current NFL player, and he said Reggie Bush. And then we said, what about a guy in the past? And he said, well, that's a guy that I know well, Julian Edelman, because Martin coached Edelman at Kent State. We talked to him about how he found him. Edelman was a quarterback at San Mateo CC out in California. And people said he's too short. And he said, I want a guy that can play and can play quarterback. Edelman was that guy. You know him with the Patriots. And he compares Huntley to Edelman. How about that? And Edelman, a Super Bowl MVP <laughs> for the Patriots. Yeah, that's a pretty good comparison. Toyota gets flushed out. He's good outside the pocket. He's going deep down the field. It was tight end oh completed. Marcus Williams, what a throw. First of all, first of all, we've been doing this a long time. That is flat out one of the best throws I've seen in person. He rolls left and throws the backside post without setting up. Do you see him get his body contorted, got his shoulder squared, and just the accuracy. Oh, my goodness. Bryson Carroll on the rush there, picks up good yardage on first down. But again, let's look at this. Look, watch the shoulder square up and uncork it with accuracy. I mean, this is amazing. Right on the money there to Williams. Carroll trying to bounce it outside as he gets pushed out of bounds there at the 16 yard line, but a first down for the Lobos. And here they come all of a sudden, some big plays in. If you're New Mexico State, you know you got to watch out for the big play when you face a Lobo attack. It could be in the running game, it could be in the passing game, and speed. That Williams play right there was unbelievable, and it's really ignited him here. It has, and speed, speed, and speed, and you see more of a sense of urgency from this Lobo offense on this drive. Rush up the middle, and taken down there at the 17-yard line. Amari Davis on the carry. Davis is the big bat out of this group. There's a lot of running backs we're going to see here for the Lobos. Davis, 5'10", 210 pounds. He's got the most carries out of anybody out of, of this group on the season. Second and six. Pass this time over the middle. A flag's down, but it's going to be a touchdown for the Lobos. That's zone read, offensive lineman downfield. Press on the catch. Great catch, great throw, but I think they're, I believe they're going to get Teton Saltes. Result of an ineligible downfield offense, number 50, five yard penalty, we play second down. And this is, this is that gray area with the, with the RPO. Uh, they like to call a three yard buffer, but you see him about four yards and still climbing right there in the middle of your screen. Saltis makes it down to the five-yard line that's, when Crest, that ball's in the air. And so that's going to take points off the board here and back up the Lobos. Davis to the left side, trying to go around the edge. He's got some room. Can he get there? He jumps, leaping in the air. Did he break the plane? Looked like he was forced out, but I didn't think there was any way he was going to be able to turn his shoulders on the edge. Good job on the outside by the big tight end, Marcus Williams. But you see the, the leap right there, but to turn your shoulders like that and still keep running. There is no play. Officiators weren't ready. Here we go, first down. Lobo's trying to go quickly there. <laughs> and the officials were you ready, in position. Were you ready? I was ready, yeah. I, I think I was ready too. So you love the effort there from Davis flying through the air, great angle from our crew. You can see he didn't make it inside the pylon. He's got another chance here, and he's in, touchdown! New Mexico answers back. Great drive, initiated by that long roll left, throw back across the field, post route. But you see the speed at which they can operate with offensively, and that drive had a sense of urgency to it, Brad. Well, they that were going, was fun to watch. Right they were there. going too fast for the officials, said. Yeah, obviously, the officials weren't ready. Let alone the defense. Third touchdown of the season on the ground for Davis. This kick is up and in from Andrew Shelley, the New Mexico man, as Mark Stout told us earlier. Here's another look at it. 
just a good, good hard job of running upfield, power running. Doesn't mess around, doesn't try to juke or do anything, just gets those pads down and brings it home. Good Bounce. job of fighting up front. Bouncing off of Williams there, the tight end, but that was really the only contact he faced there on his way to the end zone. And that's a big play from the standpoint of you had a touchdown, you were on, you had seven points on the board, the penalty, and you think, oh no, another mistake, what could happen here? But they were able to respond and still score. Respond is, is right, mentally stay focused, right? How, how clutch was that? That was a great job of just staying in the moment, staying focused, and going back and getting points regardless of the mistake. Lobo fans here loving what they've seen so far, especially on that last drive. Now the defense has got to find a way to slow down the Aggies. Murphy back and booms this one. Both of these kickers having a day. Huntley that time just going to kneel it down. And Amari Davis, no stranger to finding the end zone here in the real grand rivalry. Last season, he had four touchdowns. Are you kidding me, Seth? This power running behind. Great offensive line play. And your back is, is running tough yards, 21 carries, 74 yards, and four scores. I'll tell you what, that's how you go on the road and get a victory right there. Senior from Oakland, California. Here putting up some numbers, scoring some points here for the Lobos. We are tied at 14 with 2.29 to go here in the first quarter. Aggies back on the attack. Crossing right over the middle, it's knocked up in the air and caught and off to the races. Look out, Mitchell. What a play that was to almost tipping it to himself as he got tripped up along the far sideline. Well, I thought it was gonna be picked. Cameron Miller, if he doesn't make a shoestring tackle here, this is another score, but look, the ball's thrown behind and I thought it was gonna be a a rib shot right there on the rebound. What a catch there. Almost like a basketball player tipping Absolutely. it to himself. That would have hit Alex Hart right in the chest plate. Nicholson with a chance here and dives and can't get there. Just over the outstretched arms there of Tony Nicholson. Could have been another six for the Aggies here in the first quarter. Aggressive, aggressive play calling, taking your shots. It's a first down shot play here. You see the out and up. Ball's up early. It's a good throw, just a tad too far. Great effort. Nicholson laying out there, doing everything he could. Huntley here, another touch, a catch, and drag down from behind at the 30 yard line. Reed and Hart in on the tackle there. Jared, Jared Wyatt got away with a little bit of hold here, blocking the back. It's a great fight by the corner out here to try to get through to John Rogers to try to get through to make that play. And for Huntley, we're going to see that all day. They want to hand it to him. They want to throw it to him, even if it's a short pass. However, they can get him the ball in as many touches as they can get him. They're going to do that because he's such a dynamic player. This time he's in pass protection. We're going to go far side of the field. The receiver went down and here comes the flag. I want to see this again because it looked like he falls down on his own. Pass interference, defense, number 28. Spot foul, first down. Tony Collier there, going to be whistled for the foul. And it looks yeah, like their feet get tangled up. They do, but his hands are around his waist when there's no need have his hands around his waist. Another penalty against the Lobos. A lot of pressure here. Deep ball into the end zone. That's incomplete. That's, Lottie couldn't really track it. He turned one way and then looked the other way to try and find that ball. Well, the ball had to get up so early because of the pressure, and that's a good effort up front, bearing down on QB. Make him throw it a little bit earlier than he really wants to, but that's that old Q route where you run the slant and turn it into a corner coming back out. Not, not, it's a little bit different than a takeoff or a slant, a sluggle route. 
Second and 10, back to the air, pass complete. Still on his feet down to the 15 yard line. Lobo's saying the ball came out. The official saying the ball yeah, he was down already. Was down. Tavis Good Abraham reaction. that time on the catch, but short gain, three yards there, brings up third and seven. There's the numbers on Atkins. Aggies three for three in this game on third downs. Good. Empty backfield. Backpedaling, going to the corner route here. And Mitchell never picked up the ball. He never saw it come out of Adkins' hands or found it in the air. It's incomplete. Brings up fourth and seven. They missed a real opportunity right there. They had Huntley lined up in the slot. Number two receiver out with man-to-man -man coverage. No safety help behind. Coach Martin hot there talking to Mitchell. Dylan Brown, Brown in for the field goal, goal. Six foot, 182 pounds senior. From the right hash and able to drill it right through. So they've got the lead back after that field goal. 35 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, but 17 14, New Mexico State. This is what we expected, said a high scoring affair. Both these teams going up and down the field. A turnover early really jump-started us, but we expect a lot of points in this one. We, we really do, and, and you got to give a lot of credit to the Lobo defense right there. Overcame a little adversity, had another penalty, but were able to overcome and play solid defense to get off the field, just limiting, limiting the Abbott Aggies to three points. Aggies 17, first quarter point. They played a tough schedule. We've talked about this, Washington State, Alabama and San Diego State, but they came in just averaging nine, nine, nine points a game. And that's a gauntlet of a schedule, but here today against the Lobos, 17 first quarter points. Well, I, and we talked about those first three opponents. And, and what do you know about those three opponents? They're all physical. They all, they, all three of those teams have speed. So, so the, the test that they've gone through over the first three weeks of the season has been, been extremely fast. They've had to, at times, learn on the fly, going up against bigger, stronger, faster guys. So they've played at a higher, faster level. Alexander back deep for the Lobos. He's going to let this one fly over his head and out of the back of the end zone. And to your point, said, you know, Coach Martin said a lot, we've played a lot of big-time schools and against players that are perhaps going to be in the NFL, and we've stood up. Our speed's been good. We've made some good plays up front. We haven't really gotten pushed around. Did we get the results? Did we execute the way we wanted? No, we didn't. But we feel like we've got a lot of confidence coming out of those games. We saw a lot of good things. He showed them a couple clips early in the week about what they did well, the execution that went well against San Diego State, and they're trying to build off of that and get some momentum here. It's just the tenth offensive play for New Mexico. Giotti with the pass there, complete on the outside. Knocked out of bounds. Samoye, a new Samoye that time, 80 on the far side. And they're going quick again. Love the release. The ball just jumps out of his hands. This Davis up the middle, trying to get to that first down marker. Looks like he's going to be a yard Davis. short. The 34-yard line. Miles Bean in on the tackle. Third and one here, and the way this quarter is going to run out. Zero's on the scoreboard at the moment. So 15 minutes of football in the book here in the Rio Grand rivalry. And some excitement early on, the fireworks are going here in Albuquerque 17-14 after the first quarter. The Rio Grande rivalry after one quarter 17-14 and a beautiful day here in Albuquerque. 86 degrees at kickoff. Some of the fans there hiding in the shade as they should. Staying cool, staying out of the sun as the Lobos are back on the attack. 34 yard line. Davis in the backfield. He gets hit hard. Able to get a few yards and enough for the first down. Most importantly, moving the sticks. Yeah, and coming away out of that first quarter, New Mexico State has had the ball 10 minutes. Dominated time of possession, 10 minutes. 
compared to just under five for the Lobos. And you, you don't think of the air raid attack as time consuming and, and eating up the clock, but man, they surely took care of that first quarter. Davis again on the carry, he's got some room. Takes a hit at the 40, able to get out to the 41 yard line. Austin Perkins that time on the tackle, but gain of four here on first down for Davis. And moving the football here on the ground is gonna give, balance those numbers out a little bit, at least give their defense a break. Going up against the speed and how fast offensively the Aggies go. Another handoff up the middle. Davis has got room into the secondary. Still on his feet all the way down to the 36 yard line. The big guys up front opening things up for Davis. This is a great job by that offensive line off the left side. And look at the vision as he brings it back. That looks like it's supposed to be a, a play right side. And the vision to see it, bring it back a little bit, find that lane. 57 yards and a touchdown for Davis already in this one. To Iodi, back to pass. Deep down the middle, he's got Lilly! And just too far. Elijah Lilly, the senior speedster from San Bernardino, California, couldn't quite get there. He just needs a, instead of throwing the laser, this is the one where he needs to just throw the change up, drop it in the bucket. It's going to be a backside post route. He's got plenty of time. No help in the middle field. Ball out here with touch and air. And he knows he missed a shot there, but well-designed play. And that's what happens. You get that running game going. You stick the ball in the belly, pull it out. You're going to get receivers running wide open. Carroll gets the carry this time. Five yard gain down a 31 yard line. Carroll had a big game against Notre Dame last week. He was able to go six carries, 69 yards, and a touchdown. Nice change of pace there between Carroll and Davis now. Carroll coming back out onto the field here. Out of the shotgun from the left hash. Third and five, and we got a timeout. To Atele, the acting head coach, with the timeout, and Carroll coming on late. And personnel wise, not what you want there. Call the timeout, critical juncture here with the third down. You're driving the football, points at a premium at this point. So get the timeout, get everybody organized. And keep your good mojo going. I mean, they've, they've been very good offensively the last two drives. Keep the mojo going. On, baby. This Make is sure you get exactly what you want. Fans loving it here. They are fired up, as they should be. What a battle here. Again, 110th edition of the Rio Grande rivalry for the 74th consecutive year. These two teams meet on the gridiron. I love that. You're either crimson or cherry, man. That's it, either or. One way or the other. One way or the other. Just interesting, you know, especially talking to Coach Davey about sitting across from Aggie Lobos. I mean, it's incredible. Third and five, Toyote. Look it down the field and over the head of Lilly that time. See, we talked about him being able to get those shoulders squared up. On this play here, he never attacks the line of scrimmage. He's still running to, towards the sideline. Watch the shoulders really never square before he throws it. He's still running towards the sideline when he cuts that thing loose. But, I mean, that has got some hot sauce on it. Athletic thrown on the run. Andrew Shelley, on to a field goal. Andrew Shelley, the kicker here, 11 of 12 in his career on field goals. Put down, the kick on its way, and right down the middle. Beautiful kick there from Shelley. Able to drill it and tie things up. A couple of touchdowns for each team. Now the field goal kickers come in make it 17 apiece. Seventeen apiece 
in an emotional, highly competitive game thus far here in the second quarter. Andrew Shelley, the 48 yarder there, he had plenty of leg and punches that one through. So both teams settling for field goals on their last drive as it's been up and down in this one. Huntley back deep. And again, there haven't been many returns in this one. Let's take a look at today's Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's catch of the game. And it was the one behind Mitchell there, able to come up with it, tip it to himself. I, I know that's pretty good. I know that's pretty good. And it's early to make this call, but Mitchell, I don't think you're gonna get better than what that catch was. Maybe on Mitchell, able to tip that one to himself and come up with it. He's back out on the field along with the Aggies. They've got a first and 10 here from the 25 yard line. Again, quick on the snap count. Adkins able to drop it off and it looked like Huntley that time looked upfield before he caught that football. Well, there was great coverage there. He was flanked on the sideline, really didn't have anything, so probably a, a good thing that he did throw it low and dropped it. Martin there on the coverage, the redshirt freshman from Oxnard, California. Got to stay close to that man, Huntley, wherever he is on the field. Adkins again looking downfield. Drills this one in there, completed catch. And take it down, that's Downs at the 40 yard line. Looked like he might break it there as he got underneath and now he's still on the turf. Well, that, anytime you get tackled from behind like that, and this is a great hustle play, because watch how far number 46 goes, Brandon Shook, to make this tackle. Like he's the outside backer on the right side. He misses there and continues to hustle, and there it wraps up on the legs, gets him down. Downs there coming off slowly. We'll see with the heat out here. Again, kickoff, it was 86. Degrees out, perhaps cramps there. We've got Charlie Horses, that one's complete on the far side and knocked out of bounds. Lottie, the completed catch there, makes the catch, I should say. Nice throw, far hash throw on the quick out. But if you can complete those and you're given enough space to complete them, man, it just makes it so much easy. Gets you out in front of the chains early. Huntley on the handoff, far side of the field, cuts it back to the inside, took a big hit, but able to get the first down. Aaron Austin delivering that blow, but not before Huntley got enough yardage for the first down. You think these guys aren't flying around on the defensive side, man. That's your defensive end sprinting out to the boundary, getting out there to get a good whack on the running back. I mean, that's a great hustle play by the big fella. Adkins flushed out of the pocket and able to just get rid of this one into the Lobos bench there. He was under duress. He almost had the first completion to an air cooler on the sideline <laughs> in the history of the game. Said sometimes you just got to get rid of it. <laughs> you do. Look out, air Trust cooler me, over there on the sidelines. Second and ten here as the Aggies are in Lobo's territory. Gibson lost the football, it's on the ground. A big pile up at the 39 yard line. It looked like Gibson never had it. The handoff initially, Lobo's saying they've got it. Let's see what the officials say. That's what matters. And they're gonna say the Aggies have recovered. And that ball bounced, took a huge hop. You see he's trying to find it right there. Gets poked out, and I believe it was number 18. He gets a gets a min in there, Dylan Horton. Yeah, he did. He did have it off the handoff, and had it ripped away. Nicholson with the catch at the 35-yard line. So he Shook. just short. Shook with a nice, sure tackle. In coverage. Thought he had the route behind the bench route over the top of that underneath throw. He checks it down and. Really good tackle in open field. 
fourth and one. Looks like the Aggies are going to go for it. Adkins on the slant route, and that is complete. First down, Lottie with the catch there. As the player's wrestling for it, Isaiah Lottie, though, the go-to receiver. Fourth and one, they go to the air and able to stick it in there. I mean, you don't see many slant, slant routes throw. That's a contested throw. And you just got a guy in Lottie right there on that play, wanted that ball more and took it. Big time connection. Huntley here, bouncing it outside, trying to turn the corner. He does. Look out. He turns on the Jets. The spin move gets hammered out of bounds, but a big gainer all the way down inside the five. We're going to mark it at the two yard line. I mean, he set up these blocks on the outside extremely well. And look at that lane right there. He's able to run through, but good feet right there. Picks up a good block down the field from Wyatt. Fighting for him. I mean, he is so quick. Huntley again, going to the far side, trying to cut it up. Can he get to the pylon? They're going to say no. He was short of the goal line inside the one, though. Shook on the tackle, able to knock him out of bounds. And you see, see a nice seal on the edge. His hand hits the pylon, not the ball. Abkins is in for the touchdown. Second of the day for Josh Abkins. He pulled that out of there and said, I'll take it myself. I'll handle this. Well, there are times where you're your backside in sees that they've run the ball with Huntley three, three or four times on this drive, and all of a sudden you stick it in his belly and you ride it for two or three good steps, and you get him to turn the corner and try to chase down something from the backside. They lose contain and give up the freebie. Brown puts in the extra point. 24-17, up and down the field we go. Both teams scoring at will right now. Adkins, his second score of the game, both of them on the ground. Aggies have the lead. And rivalry, and right now the Aggies have the lead because Josh Adkins put in his second touchdown of the game and said, are you kidding me? They have three scores and they're all on the ground. Is that what you expect out of the air raid? Well, I think when they've loosened the defense up as much as they have, I, I didn't expect them to be in on the ground, maybe bubble screens or, or stuff like that. But listen, when they're not playing a QB in the zone read game, he's got to take advantage of it. And he's doing a great job of reading it. That was 11 plays, 75 yards in under three minutes for this air raid offense of New Mexico State. Again, no chance for a return for Alexander, and we go down to the sidelines with to Mark Stout. Brad, you just mentioned it. That was an 11-play drive for the Aggies. Well, herein lies one of the big things in this game. New Mexico State has run 40 plays on offense. As New Mexico comes out on offense, they have run 12 thus far in the half. And it's amazing. They've got 10 points. They scored a defensive touchdown. 12 plays. They got, you know, they've got 10 points out of it. That's incredible. So the efficiency's there, but they got to stay out on the field. They got to drive the ball. They're a home run hitting team. We know that, but they've got to keep the defense off the field with this heat in an afternoon game in this sun. You cannot leave your defense out to drive that many plays. Looks like a delay of game. They're going to get the timeout first. And not how you want to start the drive, Seth. Timeout, New Mexico. Second charge time out of the half. 30 seconds in length. What's happening is that New Mexico State's able to rest their defense, as you guys just talked about, by, by being on the field. You know, three yards here, six yards here, nine yards there. That's how their drives have gone. They haven't had many chunk plays, right? They, they, they've been kind of bottled up from the giant play that's kind of hurt New Mexico's defense, but they've matriculated the ball down the field in different ways, throws, catches, QB runs, screens, and just allowed their defense time to rest, recover, and then be ready to go back on the field and play against the Lobos. And for New Mexico fans, Bob Davey is scheduled to be back next week. Should be 100% full go for next week's game. 
and he's been around a lot this week, almost 100% of the time during practice, so familiar face of Bob Davey in his eighth year will be back next game. As Carroll's got some room as he squirts through the line, couldn't keep his feet as he's a little upset at himself there for losing his feet because there were more yards there, but a good gain on first down. Well, it looks like he gets knocked off track as he comes through the hole. Right there, a little face mask that was missed. Incomplete pass here on second down. It's going to bring up third and four. Tabaka Tuyoti, Long Beach, California native, redshirt sophomore. And it's been up and down for him playing as a freshman. And then last year, medical redshirt, broken collarbone against Liberty. And right now, they need to pick up this third down and help out their defense a little bit. Davis in the backfield to Tuyoti's right. He's going to throw. Completed pass for the first down across the 40-yard line. Cedric Patterson, the third there, makes the catch. This is, this is a great job of going up over the middle. He goes up and gets this ball. Zits up there. And secures that catch. Patterson, a redshirt freshman from Crosby, Texas. Making a big play there on third down to move the sticks. Davis got tripped up at the 40-yard line. It's a good tackle. Rashi Hodge Jr. Rashi Hodge just able to nick the heels, stays with it just long enough. You'd like to see the big fella right there just lower this right shoulder and kind of run through with the can opener. He tries to spin move and gets tripped up. Davis again, trying to cut back, and got swallowed up that time. Looked like he had some room to the outside, but cut it back. Chance Cook on the tackle, number 11 there, you see him. Richard Jr. He just keeps going to the edge there. I mean, this time you're cutting back in the middle of the field within that five yard frame, you know there's big bodies coming. He's got some space out to the edge, just keep running. Third and seven. Tuioti to the near side. That's a completed catch. And here they go. Look out for the Lobos. He's going to go all the way for the touchdown. Jordan Cress, 56 yards to the house. It's a great read. I thought they missed it because he got the ball out so late. But they ran a corner boundary blitz. And they get the ball out to the uncovered receiver who has to be covered by the safety who has to come over the top. Too much space. And Jordan Press makes a miss and is off to the races. That's the speed we're talking about. You make one guy miss and there was nobody else. He was gone. But the recognition by Tuyoti to get that ball out of his hands with the corner blitz. You got to be alert. Boundary blitz. You see right there, he sees it coming. Gets it outside. Great job staying in bounds by Cress. The move and then the foot speed. Cook went for the ball here. Didn't go for the tackle. Thought he could deflect it. Doesn't get it. And got his hands on it, actually. But Cress had it first. And then one guy misses and see you later. I mean, look at the burst. And it's a wrap right there. All you could say is go for that far hand reach. If you're a cook, go for the far hand reach, deny that pass, get it out of there. But great catch, good concentration. Rodney McGraw, the second there, got shook on that one. And Crest did the rest. First career touchdown for the young man from Loveland, Colorado, Mountain View High School. Back and forth we go, Seth. Love it. Love it, offense. 48 combined points on the board. Still 7.26 to go here in the second quarter. The 
This one hit the official there, and he's going to say it went out of bounds first. It did not go over the pylon to be a touchback. That's a big difference in yardage. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. From, from my angle, it looked like it was in the end zone when it hit him. Like he was standing two yards deep in the end zone. I mean, he had the best look at it, said for sure. Yeah, he did. That's he the did. difference so between I, the 35 I mean, and the 25, though, so 10 extra yards of field position here. Atkins back out there. 166 yards through the air already. Two rushing touchdowns on the ground. Clark in motion. Plenty of time here for Atkins, looking to get rid of it. Gets it to Mitchell, and he pushes forward out across the 40-yard line, the 41, let's call it. Well, you're trying to get pressure with just three. You drop eight, gives him a lot of time. Atkins under pressure. Delivers the ball to the corner out. Clark could not come up with it. What a throw by Atkins to hang in there. You, you, you got to have that catch. You got to have it. You're, you're a wide receiver. Say it. Say it. You got to have it. You got to make it when your quarterback's getting hit like this and standing in there. Stands in there and takes a shot to the gut. And I mean, you got to have this ball. That's Look at that throw right there, folks. Good coverage. You got to have that. Joey Noble with the pressure, the junior from Lakewood, California, number 98. But Adkins hanging in and throwing a dime there to Clark. Coach Martin and both teams now, we got a timeout on the field here with 6.52 to go, 24 apiece. As Coach Martin, he calls the plays as well. So he's not just the head coach, he's also the offensive coordinator. When you look at his resume, he's got a ton of experience, said. His seventh year here, 12th year overall as a head coach, and a number of stops along the way as an assistant coach. And he's been all over the country, but really loves being in Las Cruces. I mean, loves it, loves, loves the it. town. He told us, whole shared family. with us, his whole family's there. We got everybody there. You know, his son, Corey, is a receivers coach. So it, it's really a family affair. And Corey and his wife scheduled uh, to have baby. January 1st is the official due date. Congratulations to them. And that youngster joins us. This pass, complete near side. Good job going down to come up with it. Now they're going to say incomplete. Mitchell did not get to it. Beaten on the coverage. He's not complaining one bit. Had he caught it, he'd be he'd be in the official's down. face like, and holding offense number 50. 10 yard penalty. We play third down. Austin Young, the right guard, called for holding. So that play would not have stood anyway. It's gonna back him up. Give him another chance here on third down. That's the good part of this penalty, is they did not pick up the first down. Third and 14 from the 31 yard line. Atkins, look out. He gets sacked. Alex Hart coming around the corner. Finally gets to Atkins, and the home crowd here loves it. It's a great effort play because you got you got five or six to block four, and they don't get it done. They're only bringing four guys, but they're bringing havoc and continuing to fight and finally get home and close the door on the Aggies. Horton, the first one to get to him, and great pressure there from Austin on the near side, and then Horton gets his hands around it, and Hart there for the cleanup shot. Peyton Theisler back to punt. This one comes off his foot to the right side, a little bit short, but it takes a favorable bounce for New Mexico State. here in Albuquerque under six minutes to go before halftime both teams moving the ball up and down the field finally a punt there 
There was a little bit of a skirmish there, and that's what you expect. You know, you don't want to see that, but it's what you expect between these two rivals. But the fans were cheering for it, for the skirmish. They, they like the action. They, they don't like the, the other team's fans. They don't like the other team's players. That's just how it goes. That's part of it. Crimson or Cherry, one or the other. Tuioti to his right, trying to direct traffic, pointing there, and throws this one away. Under heavy pressure there, Hodge Jr. Got to have that feel and just pull up. He's got a blocker outside of him. He almost runs himself into trouble here. Watch as he gets to the edge, just stop. Stop not to take the hits on yourself. You got to keep, keep the hits off your body. Tuioti again last year, he had a concussion, he had a collarbone issue, so he ended up with a medical red shirt, but you got to keep him healthy, and the coaches know he's got to limit the hits on his body. They want him to run the football, but got to be careful this time. Davis running the football with authority. Tough run. And listen, you got enough horses to run the ball, right? And if you need to go and get five yards and get down, that's fine, but you got enough horses back there. You got so many great backs coming out of that backfield. Davis, 68 yards on the ground, a rushing touchdown already in this one. They're feeding him right now, and it's been working. Credit the offensive line for the initial surge and opening up some holes. Back to the air. Low throw and incomplete. Punt it away, but he gets out on his front foot, foot on this throw, and the ball goes right in the dirt. Ray Buford on the coverage, the senior from Detroit, Michigan. Tyson Dyer back to kick. First kick was 63 yards from Dyer, so keep an eye on this one. He boomed it, ended up in it being a touchback. Another beautiful spiraling kick all the way down to Huntley inside the 10. I beg your pardon, O.J. Clark. Josh Atkins had a big day today. He's found the end zone on the ground, but he's been doing it with his legs and his arm. Yeah, he's been finding the open receiver, moving around, manipulating the pocket, complete passes down the field. He's been really good throwing the ball, been more consistent. Just the one turnover early in the game. He's thrown for 172 yards and really just looked very poised and, and, and ready to play in this ball game. See 17 completions, 27 attempts. Huntley getting it done on the ground, 40 yards and a touchdown. And Mitchell with that incredible catch, set up another score. Huntley this time knocked out of bounds. And to your point about Atkins, he said, let's remember very early on the game, he threw a pick six. And so to put that behind him and do what they've done here, put 24 points up on the board, it's really impressive. He talks about that resiliency of the young man. First, first drive of the game, right? Pick six. You, you get the Lobos on the board for you too. But the response has been terrific. It's flushed out here. He's going to keep it out to the 10 and then knock down Alex Hart in on the tackle. Shocker. Number 33 is in on the tackle. Always around the ball. Shocker. He's got the knee brace on the right knee. Trent Sellers also in on the play from Fayetteville, Georgia. Six foot three, 271 pound defensive end. Huntley with a chance here and again swallowed up by that defense. Ooh, I feel like he missed the back door on that zone read. And sometimes you get your get your shoulders going one direction. You could keep him keep him square to the line of scrimmage as long as possible. Look at the back door. He's got a defender there, but with his shiftiness, 1v1 in a hole. It makes a tough block, especially if there's space. I feel like he missed that back door on that zone. Flowers there, making a nice play. Defensively. Mexico State has not converted on their last three third downs. They're gonna have to punt from their own end zone. Oh, nice good. kick all the way down to the 40 yard line. And tripped up there, flags come out. That was Rodgers on the return, 51-yard kick.
Jonathan Hood with the tackle, but let's check with the officials. Two flags came out. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 28, 10-yard penalty, first down. Here's another look at it. There's one by 32 there, and both guys right there. 11 and 32. I mean, they could have taken their choice here. They did throw two flags. Yeah. <laughs> and another one right there, so they could have. The trifecta. They got 28, Tony Collier. Moves them back to the 35-yard line. That's where they'll, where they'll start their drive. Lilly. He's got great speed, able to make one man miss and get out to the 43 yard line. That's what happens when you don't get a guy on the ground with that kind of speed. You got a tackle in space, but you see the burst makes the first guy miss and then you never know. He's one of the guys they want to get the ball to because of his ability. Carroll on the carry this time and able to surge ahead for the first down over the left side. Close to the 50 yard line, but first down. I love the way Bryson Carroll attacked this run right here off the left side. No messing around. He got his pads down. Went up in there for the nice gain and the first down. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. Tight end also to the near side and the running back. Toyota going deep over the middle. Complete down to the five yard line. Chris again. A sensational pass there right on the money. Jordan Cress able to come down with it and they are in business here. You see Ray Buford looking for help from his safety but he's just coming here running the post route. Ball thrown on time out in front. 47 yard gain as they go up the middle here on first and goal trying to go quickly here and catch the Aggies off off balance defensively they give it to the workhorse Davis able to pick up one yard there got a player down for New Mexico State and you know on a play like that where, where you're expecting help you're, from your safety it's cover three or man free whatever you want to call it he thought he was getting help back there and something took the eyes of that safety away from that player. Probably another crossing route or something up in front of him, like a little snag route to hold him, and you just launch over the top. It was a beautiful throw and catch. Just that little play action. You see the little crosser, but he is not getting back. Safety's got to get out of there. Rodney McGraw, he's got to get back and help, but he gets caught staring. Tuioti there taking the shot from Hodge. Still able to deliver the pass and a beautiful one at that. Yeah, right on the money. And sometimes you're talking about coverage, said? That's great coverage. Sometimes the pass and catch is too good. Absolutely. Second and goal here for the Lobos. Tied at 24. Davis up the middle, spinning. And he did not get the ball across the line. Coming up short. Third goal. Hodge and McGraw in on the tackle, and they're going quickly here. Davis reaches it across, touchdown! He had four touchdowns a season ago in the Rio Grande rivalry. He's got two here in the first half. Something about him against the Aggies. Just a nose for the end zone. That time there was traffic in front. He was leaping, diving, trying to stretch across. Able to get there. So they're going to look at it, but he was on top of players off the ground for that final stretch. Was able to get the left arm over the goal line. They are going to review this one. You heard the official there, Eddie Shelton, say they're going to take a look at it. But watch how he's off the ground still. No knee parts are down. Like he's laying on bodies, and that left arm's able to get up and over the top. You'll see it better right here from this beautiful look but nothing's on the ground. And that left arm's crossed a while ago. Great look from our crew here at AT&T Sports now. That's all, you, you got the knee not touching the ground, suspended 
on players there suspended in the air. So we think this will be a short, take a look at it. He's across, we'll get a touchdown. But again, this is that, definitive that, to me. That looks like an iconic Emmett, Emmett Smith jumping touchdown like that where he leaped over. That, that's a great shot right there, great shot. Six of eight touchdowns in his career for Davis have come <laughs> against the Aggies. That's unbelievable. Four last year, two this year. After review, six points for the Lobos. They're going to line up for the extra point. And we Andrew Shelley, redshirt sophomore from right here in Albuquerque. 67 seconds to go before halftime, which is enough time certainly for this air raid offense of New Mexico State to put a drive together and answer. But right now, 30-24, the Lobos with the lead. Well, they still have two timeouts left. They need to get off to a good start on this next drive. Shelly pulled that one a little bit, but snuck it inside that left upright. Dyer is the holder, and Jared Enrico is the snapper, so that went well. The kick is up and in. Here's the scoring drive, six plays, 65 yards. Didn't take very long. And again, Davis, the one finding Pater. Yeah, the big play to Cress on the post route was a huge throw and catch, because it was a contested catch. He came down with it, put him in the red zone, and Johnny touchdown. Amari Davis took care of the rest. Tui Odi, again, missed some time due to family matters during the fall. So he really didn't have a shot to be the starting quarterback at the beginning of the season. He's been back. He did miss a little bit of school, but he's been back. He's settled in. The players love this guy. He's dynamic. He's got coaches telling us he's got that it factor. And really, the sky's the limit. Coach Davey saying this is really a jumping off point for our team. With him at their quarterback winning a rivalry game, we can get so much confidence out of one game here, it can really springboard our season and take us to new heights. They're one and one right now, but who knows what could happen if they can get a victory here today. Well, any, any, anything's possible, especially when you have your, your entire league play in front of you. You know, you can still go out and try to win the Mountain West Mountain Division. Great conference, great division of football. I mean, there's a lot of things that you have on your checklist that you want to try to do. You want to be bowl eligible. A lot of things they want to do. A lot of goals this team has. Still just September. Absolutely. They already had a bye week in there. So they, this is just their third game. New Mexico State has played four counting today. Atkins, a little dump off. It got deflected that time. So Rimicon did a nice job coming off of his rush. Sir McKinn from Los Angeles, California. Watch him on the twist right here. And he sees he can't get there, but he spies up. That's some athleticism. You see those hops? I love that. That was awesome. It's oh, a big fella. Knowing he wasn't going to make it to the quarterback, like you said. With that right paw up. Hart coming on the blitz here. They're going to run it up the middle with Gibson. And let's see now if New Mexico takes a timeout. Going to bring up third and about six, six and a half. And they're going to drain this clock. No, neither team calling a timeout right now. And for the first time all afternoon, we've seen New Mexico State taking their time before they snap the ball. Well, with two timeouts, it's, I mean, I, I think you maybe have a play in your pocket, call two plays in a huddle on the first play of this drive to see if you get anything. And the clock's going to stop because Gibson got the first down. Horton on the tackle. They're going to move the chains here, and let's see if they pick it up and try and go quickly. They're on their own 31-yard line. Clock is now running. Well, that, I feel like that, pass, that time has passed. Yeah, they ran out of time. That time has passed. Even with two timeouts, that sense of urgency had to be there. Atkins, they still have Unless time. That. Mitchell into the open field, knocked down at the 17. A blur right there after the catch. Navion Mitchell has made a couple outstanding plays in this one. He stumbled for just a bit, and Rodgers able to get him to the turf before he got to the end zone. I'm baffled that that you you give up that skinny post. How how?
go to the replay here. I believe he comes right down the seam and gets upfield and runs the post inside. It's just a middle read route. And the safety, you got to be a little higher, but you can't allow him to get inside of you. Know the situation. You can't be out of position like that. 53-yard gain right there. He stumbled. Otherwise, he might have been gone. Rodgers from behind there on the near side. Hadkins thought he was. He yeah, said, that's actually, it. He's, that's six. Look at him. Look at that reaction. I mean, they run the middle read into the boundary. What a great throw. And good call. Get the safety too wide and outside. And you're right. If he doesn't stumble there, Brad, he probably walks into the end zone. He certainly had some open field there. Mitchell's had a couple of huge plays in this one. They're gonna looks like they're gonna put seven seconds on the clock here. So they added one. It was at six. A huge plays for Mitchell is right. Four catches, 105 yards in the first half. And you can see there, <laughs> even after a big play, he's a little disgusted. That look on his face, going, "I had one. I should be in the end zone. I should have taken it all the way." Still time. What are you thinking here? Said one play and then the field goal. Uh, pin, pinning on how fast you can get it out of there. I might go fade right here to the bottom of the screen. Nicholson, he's got it. Touchdown, Aggies. Two seconds on the clock right before the half. Did you say fade to the corner, said? Fade right to the bottom of the screen. So that was, yeah. That was it. It's always to the, fade's always going to the corner. You know that, Brad. Tony Nicholson. Grad transfer from Baylor coming up huge. He had 78 yards a week ago as a career high and finding the end zone. Two seconds on the clock. Brown ties things up. 75 yards in a minute, five seconds for the Aggies on that scoring drive. I mean, this is really good throw and catch. But if you're going to be up at the line of scrimmage, you've got to get hands on these guys. These receivers are too big, too strong. And if you don't get hands on, reroute, keep them away from getting on top of you. You see what happens there with the nice throw and catch. And what you'd expect from that connection. What a momentum swing here. Wow. The Lobos go down and punch it in. You think they're starting to get control of this game. Not that much time before the half, and all of a sudden the explosion play from Mitchell and a chance to score, well, and they convert. I was extremely critical of the way they started this drive out, and then all of a sudden they wanted to go fast, and then the big play happened. You know what I mean? And, and Got to be disappointed if you're the Lobos defense, giving that up before the half, especially when you had 21 seconds left. And the team looked like they were ready to get off the field. They had two timeouts. They looked like they were ready to get off the field. They get a first down, and all of a sudden they decided to take a shot and were able to make it happen. First career touchdown you see there on the graphic for Nicholson. And Atkins has gotten hot. You know, the New Mexico coaches were worried about that. They said he's streaky. He can really get it going. Sometimes he turns the ball over. We saw it in the very first drive. But since then, he has been in rhythm with this receiving core and backs. And it shows on the scoreboard as we are tied 31 apiece. No time came off the clock. As they kneeled it there. Uh, and maybe he was told to, but that to me, that's one of your better plays. Right? You got a kicker on the field. Everybody else is blocked. Should be blocked. Right? Take a chance. Take a chance on the return. He got the ball with about 30 yards of space. But as fast as he did it, it looked like he was told to shut it down. So they've got a play in mind here. They are going to have to go from the 16-yard line. One second on the clock. So that kneel down, they took one second off the clock. Safety formation, or, or excuse me, safe formation. They're, and the Lobos take a knee. And what a first half. 31 apiece said. We had fireworks from the first drive with a pick six and a late score with two seconds left. We've had it all, and it's just halftime. Well, I, I, both teams keep responding. 586 yards of offense in that first half. Both teams keep responding. That's what's making this beautiful to me. This is awesome. Yeah, impressive display of offense. We knew coming in it was going to be a high-scoring game. Both these teams struggled to stop their opponents coming in, so we anticipated a lot of points and the ball moving up and down the field, but not quite. I didn't expect 31 
a piece at halftime. Holy cow. And now we head down to Mark Stout on the sidelines. Heard you say to your guys, 0-0. Zero, zero. Here we go. How do you coach them up at half? 0-0. Zero, zero. No matter what. What a first half. 40, 31 apiece, I should say. So many points already in this one. And we head down to the sidelines to Mark Stout. I spoke to head coach Doug Martin coming out of the locker room of the Aggies. I asked him, did you expect a 31-all game? And he said, you know what? Our offense has moved the ball in the first three games of the season. We just have turned it over. So he was hopeful, and he's gotten that. As for the defense, he wants the defense to force some turnovers. And Huntley, number one, look for them to try to get him working up the middle on some runs in the run game, guys. Thank you, Mark. And Coach knows with that air raid offense, he knows Atkins can get hot. He really believes in this quarterback and his ability. So they they played some tough games early on. They're 0-3, right? But he knows their offense has looked good. He said to us this week, we've had a lot of weapons offensively, and right now they're all working. They are all working. And, and him wanting to get the middle of the field sealed up and get Huntley on some of those quick hitters is because they've had the perimeter game work so well to this point. Brown with the kickoff into the near corner. Alexander gets popped there at the 17-yard line and knocked out of bounds. So some tough field position here to start, but New Mexico's had their way offensively. Look at these leaders, and Tuioti efficient, 7 of 12 with a touchdown, but Davis has really established himself on the ground. He has, and, and seven less carries. He's almost got as many yards as he had in the entire game a year ago. They're doing a nice job running downhill and Cress with the big plays down the field, 100 receiving yards. First drive starts from the 16-yard line here. Davis right up the middle, and he got an initial surge from the line. Ferguson, star linebacker here for the Aggies, gets in there to make the stop along with Perkins. And again, that's a, one of those runs where you get in space, just stay north-south, lower your pads, big back, finish the run downhill strong, inflict some pain on the defenders. One of those runs where you look at it and say there were more yards there potentially than what he got. Sometimes it's the opposite. Tuyote's going to keep it here. Lob ball down the middle of the field to the tight end, Williams, and tackled across midfield. Tuioti that time just putting it up for his big tight end and, and making sure he had a chance to go get that one. And that's what you want to do in those wide open throws, but you see him stick it in there and he's trying to roll with it, but on the run is able to throw it inside, gets it to him just in the nick of time because Jason Simmons was coming over from the other side with the help. 31 yard gain there for the Lobos. Tuioti back to throw, near side, and can't complete that one to Ume. A little bit too wide. Uh, he's got to be a little more patient. Tuioti, Tuioti has to be a little more patient on this route. Just stand there. It's a double move route. Kind of a squirrel out. And he's got to be patient on that throw. Second and 10 coming up. Ball on the 49-yard line of the Aggies. Coach Tuatele, they're directing traffic. You saw a shot of them there pointing to the far side of the field. Now they get everybody lined up properly. Quick throw to the outside, and nothing doing that time. Jake Griffin, the fourth, taken down by Ray Buford. That's a great job of fighting the block, and, and your main job outside on bubble screens, any kind of quicks. If you're the first receiver out there, you see he fights through the block of press who kind of goes a little wild at him, doesn't chop his feet and stay in control. So that's a good job of fighting the block and making a tackle for loss. Buford, fifth year senior, number one on defense for the Aggies. Tuioti flushed out, keeping in his eyes downfield. Now he's gonna run, he's got room. And wisely slides down there the 36 yard line after picking up the first down. That's part of that maturation as he grows and you know you got to be on the field, so no need to take extra shots. You've got enough. You're in open space. You don't have to take shots, but watch how he kind of works the pocket, but his eyes are still downfield. He wants to throw it until he takes off, but you see the burst, and he is smart with the slide. 
Extremely athletic quarterback. You've seen on a number of the throws and everybody moving except the center snapping the ball. Kyle Stapley, the center for the Lobos. Ball start, offense. Everybody but the snapper. <laughs> Five yard penalty, remains first down. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> everybody else moves. He's, he's right, he's, he's right. So, so who's wrong? Stap Stapley that time is, <laughs> was the snapper, the center there. <laughs> And Coach Tuatele can't be happy there. He's the acting head coach. He's also the offensive line coach. So those are his big guys up front. And this time, they're going to give the five yards back, I think. Look like the Aggies came across. We'll wait for the official. Outside, with contact, number 88. Five yards. first down. Xander Yarborough going to be the guilty party. Right there in the right defensive tackle. Listen, offensively, those penalties hurt. You're able to get it back. Got to get back on track and just keep working smooth. He had the rhythm going after a couple of those plays. Carroll with the yellow outlet pass. He's got it here down to the 33-yard line. This is a really good job by Bryson Carroll being available off of the check down. You know what I mean? He gets down, he, he checks his guy, he checks. And good job by Tuoti to really get it out to him quick. Allow him to go and try and get some yards, but pressure's coming again. He's maturing, getting the ball out to his check down early. That's a great job. Make the hand off play action. That pass got deflected at the line. A big hit delivered there in the secondary. Jay Griffin, the fourth, got nailed by Jason Simmons Jr. But the pass was deflected, so there's no pass interference. There was no pass interference. The ball was tipped. Third down. Well, it's it's an RPO. See his eyeballs, and he's looking down the field. Really good job by the DN there. Actually, that's Javon Ferguson gets up in the air and knocks it down as he sees it happening. Third and five. Lobos trying to keep this drive alive. Shotgun snap, Tuioti going down the field near side. Ume's running out of bounds. He could not come up with it. The near side official threw his hat. He got away with one there. Shamad Lomax knows he gave up one. He comes up hobbled. Well, you see him coming over from the safety spot. And Ume didn't touch it first. That's why he can go out of bounds and come back in. You can see the official has already thrown his hat there. He throws it right there in the corner. He was out of bounds, but Lomax touched it first. So if Ume comes down with it, it's going to be it's going to be a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, you had Austin Perkins there as well. There's no way he should have ever got his hands on that ball. Lomax needing help coming off the field. One of the captains of the defense from due west, South Carolina. And he looks to be okay. Limp it a little bit there. Larry, he's going to get checked out by the training staff. Hopefully nothing serious. Shelly going to take a deep one. 49-yarder here from the right hash. Not much win. Booms this one, and he's got enough. How about that from 49 yards? Drills it. 34-31 the score here. The Lobo fans love being back in front. The kicker coming through. Rio Grand rivalry going on here, and a lot of excitement. People on the river are missing this one right now. 34-31, Andrew Shelley. 50, officially a 50-yard field goal. And he's got a big leg. He's come through with two made field goals so far in this one. Huntley able to get out to the 30-yard line on that return. There haven't been too many opportunities for returns, but that time he shows up why he's got five kickoff returns for touchdowns in his career. Yeah, well, he's not going to get very many chances all year, right? So the ones that he gets, he's got to make them count because he is that, that special. And his guys know it as well. So you see him try to get out and get it set up, but Sometimes you get a team out there that doesn't want to be part of that record. They don't want to allow you to take one to the house. That's good effort by the Lobo coverage team. 
Atkins back out there, 19 of 30, 236, a touchdown and interception through the air and two rushing touchdowns. Huntley right up the gut, watch out. He's got elite speed. Forced out of bounds by Rodgers that time, but a big play to start this drive for New Mexico State, who seems like they haven't had the ball for a long time, but 31 yards on that scamper. Well, it's a, it's a zone, zone right play, but again, he keeps his shoulders square and is able to hit the zero hole right up the gut. And that's what coach told Mark Stout at halftime. They're going to run him up the middle, spread everybody out, and get Huntley some touches. And that time, cut it back right up the middle. 31 yards later, they've got the ball on the 38-yard line here. Huntley, 77 yards on nine carries. A little issue with the chains across the field. Clock's now running, everybody's ready to go. Atkins with a the keep there, zone read, and pulled it from Gibson, and cuts this first and 10 and a half. It's gonna be second and five. Yeah, and that's just enough, just enough to keep you honest, right? So you can't fall down and, and try to tackle from behind. You run your quarterback and have him pull it and keep it. Good execution. Atkins looking downfield, he's got plenty of time. Now goes to the far sideline and into the cheerleaders over there, just throwing it away. Other than that first possession for the Aggies where they threw the pick six, uh, they put points on the board. I mean, a couple of punts late, but they were impressive offensively, Seth. I thought the most impressive thing was the, the last touchdown before the half. I mean, they literally looked like they were kneeling the ball down. And two plays later, bang, bang, they're in the end zone for a score. That's how fast this team could put it together. They've got big play capability, weapons all over the place. Got a stoppage here. I'm not quite sure Coach Martin's calling his team over. She was discussing timeout. things with the official. New Mexico State, first time out of the half. 30 seconds in length. So the Aggies with the timeout. They're gonna talk things over. Two left here, just early third quarter. An explosive first half, 31 all at halftime. Atkins talking with his head coach and the offensive coordinator. Navion Mitchell, number 20 for the Aggies, 5'10", 175 pounds, redshirt freshman, made a couple of unbelievable plays, able to stay in bounds along the sideline there. Four catches in total for over 100 yards. This one's amazing. That, the concentration, because you literally, you, you have to think you're going to get sawed in half when you're going across like that with your head up in the clouds. And I think that one, he, he'd won back just because if he doesn't stumble, he scores easily. The Aggies were able to score on that drive right before the half as Nicholson able to pick up the first down on the far side of the field, completed pass there. Dejon Rogers on the coverage, but Tony Nicholson with a touchdown right before the half, two seconds left, a big momentum swing there for the Aggies going into halftime. Atkins has been on time and on target. He has an eight, I mean, they run a lot of stuff timing wise. You don't see a ton of that down the field, but Clark with a nice gain there on a short pass, able to cut back to the inside and pick up some yardage. Fifth year senior from Wichita Falls, Texas. You, you watch Atkins play and he's got some really good anticipation. These kind of throws are set up bubble screens, but he's throwing out routes from the far hash. Things like that that have to be anticipated. He's got a real good knack of it. Huntley on the perimeter. Trying to get through three Lobos, he cannot. Clark trying to hold up on that block, but swarming defense from the Lobos there. Patrick Peake and Reed in on the tackle. First down. First and goal here, ball inside the 10 at the nine. Coach Martin looking over that play sheet. Atkins is going to keep it. He's had a nose for the end zone so far, trying to run over a defender. Jarek Reed, the second there, able to get him to the ground, but he paid for it. He did, and this time he keeps it tight off of the fake. Watch him keep it tight, which allows his guard to block the defender right there. Just enough. He gets just enough 
of the linebacker to, to allow him to get inside the five. Aggies on the doorstep here. Atkins looking, looking, going in the back corner and really just thrown it away at that point. Well over the intended target and out of bounds. It's going to bring up third and three. Smart play, solid team defense there by the Lobos. Nothing really open. Everybody doing their job, staying in their lanes. Really sound defense right there by the Lobos. Atkins, you look at the stats there, two on the ground rushing touchdowns, one through the air, third and three here. Quick throw, Nicholson, he's in, touchdown, New Mexico State. Beautiful timing on that, the other receivers blocking into the end zone and gave him enough to get to the goal line. And the thing is, it happens so fast, Brad, that you really don't have time to react. If it's an accurate throw, there's not a lot you can do from the two yard line to stop this play. Because you see the conver they're converging on him, but it's still too late. Extra point is up and good. Makes it 38-34 here in Albuquerque. What a game, back and forth they go. These two high-powered offense lighting up the scoreboard. Both the bands here playing early and often with the amount of scores we've had in this one. 38-34, New Mexico State and Tony Nicholson, his second touchdown of the game. And there's the scoring drive, just three minutes and seven seconds. And the quick pass out to the left. Nicholson able to find the end zone. Again, second of the day. He had the one right before the half, which was crucial for the Aggies to get some momentum before halftime. As Dylan Brown sends this one down deep. And it bounces at the one, and it's going to be a touchback as Chad Alexander there kneels. But Tony Nicholson today, we mentioned him in the open, said, and this guy came to play. He did. Big catch at the end of the half. It just done a nice job of running routes. I mean, his route running is exceptional. And that one right there, you know you got to stick your nose in to finish it off. As a receiver, it's awesome because you're by the goal line. You want to stick your nose in there, you're like, yeah, I'm getting six for this. No problem. Will yeah, do. You, well, you know, if you don't score there, you're going to hand it off to somebody and they're going to score. The rest of the team be all over you if you don't get in the end zone at that point, right on the doorstep. Davis with the carry and knocked down in the backfield. Yarbrough and Shane Jackson there to make the play. That play was blown up by Yarbrough with the penetration to start. If you get penetration on any of these zone reads and not allow guys to get off, it hurts plays and negative play on first down. Shane Jackson getting the start today. Jim Marvin Hartfield injured as this ball is not caught. Is it a backwards pass? The officials going to say incomplete pass. And wisely, Austin Perkins there picking up the ball just to be sure. But the safety, Jason Simmons, delivering a blow. Uh, yeah, big blow. I mean, that's this, and this is the second time a, a Lobo receiver has gotten taken down and, and it's in the middle of the play. Can't stop himself. But I mean, what are your thoughts? He was up high. <laughs> Lily was going down to like pick up the ball. He got him with the shoulder. Third and ten here. Can the Aggies get off the field? And the Lobos want a timeout. They got it just in time, right before the snap. To it, Coach Tuatele, acting head coach here in for Bob Davey, who will be back next week. Unhappy with his team's execution here. He's now trying to encourage them as they huddle up, talk things over, a big third and 10. And this is what both teams we knew coming in, defensively, they've struggled a little bit. They've given up a lot of yards. And right now, it's just about any stop at all right now is a huge stop. Whether If you can force the punt team out there, you're going to be in good shape with the amount of points on the board and the amount of times these teams are scoring when they touch the football. Well, if you're, I mean, third and 10, if you just still go out and execute, if you could block, give yourself a chance to get a throw out there. The yards are there. there there's plays to be made. 
Both teams back out on the field and ready to go here. Third and 10 from the 25 yard line. Pass complete right at the marker. Ume coming right down the 35 yard line. It's going to be spotted at the 36 and move the chains. Great throw and catch on the backside dig route. Ball was right on the money. Watch him come in from your backside right into this window. Good concentration. Good job moving the sticks. Good protection because they brought pressure up the middle. Tuioti's going to keep it here on the zone read and then wisely just goes down. Seven yards. Seven yards. Solid pickup on first down, Seven and he yards. didn't take a hit. He didn't take a didn't shot. Take a Love it. Love everything about that play. You can see he's got a different gear when he really turns it on and starts to run. Very athletic quarterback. You can see even throwing on the run, how smooth and athletic he looks and how much of an arm he has while throwing on the run. So it's no surprise when he keeps it. He's got some moves. Davon Vigilant in now, and he'll take that carry up the middle, trying to get to the first down marker. Got it. It looks like he's going to have enough. Based on that spot, John Graves the third in on the tackle, the nose guard. Probably one of the top passing schools for three years in a row, one of the top three in the nation. But three years in a row that he started, he was one of the top. I mean, so the guy can throw the football, has pretty much thrown just about every pass you can imagine. They just have not been able to keep him on the field. This time he drops back, he's got time. Got a receiver open on the near side. Ume again with the catch down to the 37 yard line. And Tuioti that time had time. He could set up, survey the field. He was outside the pocket. And he's extremely patient right here, Brad, is what you love. He waits for the over route. Ume comes all the way over from the backside. And he just throws it just outside the reach of Javon Ferguson. Leads him away from him. Ume with a good catch. Well designed. And good execution. Another throw here, a roll to the left, going back over the middle. Did Williams get his hands underneath it? They're going to say incomplete on this one. The big tight end trying to come up with it. Six foot three, 215 pound junior from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, Cleveland High School for Williams and could not get his fingers under there and corral that one. He throws this one short because he can't really get into the throw. He gets pressure off the edge. He did get that oh, right oh, hand no, underneath that's, there. That's close to a, I mean. Let's see if they buzz down and that review right this one. right hand was extremely close. The officials said incomplete, but it looked like he kept it off the turf until he had control at least. Tuyoti on the run, trying to get outside. Going for that first down marker, reaches with the right hand. It depends on the spot here. And those are the times where you want to extend and go for it on third down. You got to get to that first down marker. Right. It, Looked like they had four verts on the route, four nine routes, vertical routes up the field, but you see him extend, and he's definitely beyond the marker. Watch right here, he's definitely beyond the marker on that extension. Not a favorable spot, but they still have a chance here on third and one. Davis right up the middle, and he's gonna have enough. Rasheed Hodge in on the tackle, but not before they get the first down. On that play, just a few plays ago when he scrambled, they ran four verts. And he had the other slot receiver up the seam with nobody. Keep that one in your pocket. Maybe come back to you at another time. Two tight ends in the game now roasted, for New Mexico. You're about to get roasted, man. Tuioti over the middle. Dangerous throw that time. Trying to reach Crest there. The safety was closing in from the middle of the field, though. And Ball's it incomplete. Yeah, it didn't move, move the safety. Couldn't move him with his eyes because there was pressure bearing down. So he's falling away as he's throwing this, and this is very dangerous. Look at the safety's moving to the wide side of the field. Pressure's coming up inside. Very fortunate. 
Pressure right up the middle. It's hard to step into that one. Devin Richardson there, number three, applying that pressure. Run up the middle. Davis bounced off his own guy there and got sent back. Still able to pick up five down to the 20-yard line. It's going to bring up third and five. Javon Mosley with the sure tackle. He's in the hole, has it blocked up, getting downfield. The big fella working upfield, but turn upfield. Don't go sideways. Turn upfield. Knocks Davis back into <laughs> Ferguson, the nation's leading tackler a season ago. Not only did you stop your guy, but it gave time to Ferguson to wrap him up and take him down. 6'7", 317, you're not going much further. Hard to get out of the way at that point with the tailback coming right at you. Trips to the field here. They go to the boundary. It's Chris. Look out. Touchdown, Lobos. The quick slant to the house. Jordan Kress scores again. The speed is evident from that young man in this game today, and the home crowd couldn't be happier. Another accurate throw, but the eye discipline here. Watch him look left and then turn and drill it on the slant route. You move the safety out of the way, get him out of position, see his eye discipline. That's quarterback big time right there. That's how you play right there, using your eyes, and then you throw an accurate pass so your guy can continue to move with it. Shelly puts it up and through 41-38. The lead is back to the home team. The Lobos strike again. One for the Aggies. Atkins, pump fake, going for it all here. He's got a man. And trying to make a one-handed catch, but can't come down with it. Lottie that time had a chance. Great effort, just didn't get there. See, just like you to, as a receiver to give your guy credit, but this is a dime right here. You got to catch this ball. Look at this throw drop in the bucket. Under pressure, takes a shot. You got to make that catch. Tony gotta... Collier on the coverage. Can we give him some credit, Said He's got one arm wrapped around him there, holding that left hand. That's a great throw. That's a great throw by the quarterback. Defender making a nice play there, but Clark with the catch, and he lost it out of bounds, but a minimal gain. James Lewis on that tackle, a junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Coffeeville Junior College transfer. Mexico State, six for 10 on third down here in this one. This is third and long, third and 10. The Lobos home crowd getting loud. Atkins going to the corner route for Clark over his head. Incomplete here. Let's see if they go for a long field goal. Dylan Brown's got a big leg. Career long is a 49 yarder. Tony Collier did a nice job of sinking just enough to get underneath that smash route. Forced him to overthrow it. 44 yard field goal attempt. This could tie it. Lobo's in front right now. Dylan Brown, the left foot, and that looked like it got deflected. It's no good. The Lobos get a stop. I don't know who it was, but that looked like it was blocked. Devin Sanders is 19, the one coming off the field, fired up like he got a piece of it. And it was Sanders. Good call, Bradley. Up, up the middle. Watch him go up and the big left hand go up right there inside. And just enough. Shows the leg of Brown though. That still almost went in. That was a solid deflection. It still almost snuck inside that right upright. Big play for Sanders. A lot of love on the sidelines for him. Well deserved with that huge play. Lobo's back on the attack. Davis up the middle, churning the legs. He picks up four. It's a big drive here. Be methodical, be patient, be clean. Just had this defense out on the field for a long time. Now you, now you try to go wear them down a little bit. 
The press box shading the field here as they go to Davis again up the middle. And still churning, surging forward. And Coach called him stout and a workhorse and a power back, and he showed it right there. And that, those are the plays where you expect from him. A couple of times we saw him cut in the hole, right. just put the shoulder pads down and drive the legs. And, and inflict punishment. This right here, he gets squared up and knows it's a short gainer, but keeps driving. And that pile keeps going for another three and a half, four yards. Strong, strong run. And enough for another first down. 94 yards on the day on 20 carries for Davis. He's got it again. And that time got bent back. Hodge there in on the tackle. 44 as well, Matthew Young. Third quarter winding down here, under 90 seconds to go. Second and nine. New Mexico taking their time. They do have the lead, but just by three. Quick throw to the outside. It's complete. And look out to the 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Lobos. Cedric Patterson to the house. 63 yards. And those are the big plays we talked about. A short pass, we've seen it throughout this game. Home run hitters across the board for the Lobos. I mean, you're talking a reserve receiver here blazing down the sideline for a touchdown. But the thing is, it has to be an accurate throw for, for a couple of reasons. If it falls behind, it could be picked, right? If it's in the dirt or too low, you don't get the first down. They're just trying to get positive yards, keep the thing moving. And a quick spin outside after the catch is what makes this happen. He knows he's got no help, so we're just running the square out outside. Watch the fake inside with the play action, but look at the quick feet, and he drills it out before he's even out of his break. Catches and the quick spin up the boundary. And it's all over with. This is a tough handle right there. A little behind, but he's able to catch with hands. Quick spin up the sideline, and it's a wrap from there. You see the kind of team speed the Lobos possess. Ray Buford not able to make that tackle. Look like quarters coverage on that side of the field, so no real safety help along the sideline there. Tuioti fired up as he should be. He's been efficient and accurate. And a couple of run plays there to Davis and then opening up the passing game. Four plays, 73 yards, a minute 47. And a 62-yard touchdown for Patterson the third. You've got that defense on the field. You're wearing them down. And right now, if I'm the coaching staff, I'm telling Kelly Romero, get this thing in the end zone. Don't give number one a chance to set them up with nice field position here. Here's a little pooch kick to the 35-yard line. Gibson was ready for it and calls the fair catch. So the Aggies will start at the 35-yard line. Patterson on the 25th attempt from Tuioti, which is a new career high for him, takes that one to the house. And it's just, it, it's awesome to watch his footwork, how quick he is with the RPO play passes, getting the ball out fast and on time. We've seen a lot, a lot of that from Atkins as well. Clark with the reception out to the 40 yard lines, call it the 41. And both teams winning on first down. Five, six, seven yards a pop for both teams on first downs in this game. And, that's why you can have some success offensively when you can get ahead of the chains, keep the defense off balance. Atkins is in trouble here. He's sacked back to the 32-yard line. Well, he had a, obviously had an alert, alert hot on, and receivers weren't ready on the far side of the field. He goes to throw it out. And nobody's ready. Watch him catch it, and he's ready to throw it. It's a zone right. He's supposed to hand it off, but he saw hot, saw something he wanted to get the ball out. Receivers were not ready for it. And a bad snap here. 
Atkins has to go all the way back to get it. He falls on it at the 17. And the momentum right now for New Mexico appears to be too much for the Aggies right now. They're self-imploding. They are. And, and can't have that. You got to just calm down and, and try and make plays. Just calm down. It's plenty of time. You got a full quarter left. Third quarter comes to a close. Tuioti catching fire in the third quarter, drilling in a couple TD passes. The Lobos have the lead 48 38. Eight in a high scoring affair, and they're going to get the ball back here as the Aggies lined up to punt. Peyton Theisler. Standing at his own three yard line here. Kicks a low one. Hits the ground, no return here. And a nice bounce that's going to go all the way down to the 22 yard line. 60 yards on that kick. And we go down to the man on the sidelines, Mark Stout. Hey, Brad, and said Lobo's going back on offense. Their key guy on the line is that man, number 64, Kyle Stapley. He runs the O-line. He didn't play center until last year. He went to Snow Junior College in Utah, and he is admittedly, as he says, a farm boy from Morgan, Utah. Likes to hunt, fish, and weld. And until a month ago or so, he had a three-year-old beard that we shaved off, by the way, and they raised $5,000 for the UNM Scholarship Fund. But He's the guy that makes it go in the middle. Yeah, one of the vocal leaders, and that's just what you want out of your center, so. Yeah, well respected amongst all of his teammates. Davis sifting through the middle. Something about Davis just has the number, has the Aggies number. And Graves on the tackle, but Davis, yeah, they, they keep feeding them. Normally they rotate backs a little bit more. If you watch the game last week against Notre Dame, you didn't you didn't see Davis that much. He had nine carries, but Tuioti, that those are just the third quarter stats here, Seth. Look at that. Seven for 13, 144 yards and two touchdowns. They're getting it done through the air and on the ground. Tuioti going deep to Lilly. They're fighting for it. Bounced up in the air and he can't quite juggle it, but the flag comes out from the back judge that time, throwing the flag from the middle of the field. Both guys were wrestling for right, it. That, I, that was a jump ball all the way. I don't, I, I got to I would. Just. Highest interference, defense, number 29, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Jared Phipps is going to be whistled Look, for the call, but he, Lilly's pushing off he's there. Pushing he's got a hold well. of the jersey. This is, this is a no call, and that's why the official, there's an official literally three yards in front of him right there. You see him right here. And that's why he doesn't make the call because they're both jousting for position. Tough call. Well, we've talked to a lot of coaches already this season. And almost all of them say defense is tough these days with the amount of calls as Lilly and on the jet the sweep there gets wrapped up for a minimal game. They've all yeah, said it's, it's tough to play defense with the way the rules are right now. That was an example of it. You got both guys fighting, the defense loses. Yeah, it, that, the substitutions, which they're supposed to allow you to get time to get guys in, the pace of play. It's hard to play defense. It's hard to get stops. Small target where you can hit guys. Absolutely. When you can hit the quarterback. I mean, it's hard to play defense. The rules favor the offense and scoring. We've had that here today, 48-38 is the advantage for New Mexico at the moment. Davis again, excuse me, Carroll across midfield. Aggie's trying to rip the ball out of there. Ferguson, the man in the middle, comes up with that tackle. Not after a nice game, though, as they move the sticks. Ferguson, 15 tackles last week. At San Diego State University. I, we haven't brought his name up enough, I feel like, because he's such a good player, but right now it's all about the offense. It is, well, everything's outside, on the, attacking the perimeter, and then when they go, do go inside, the, the Lobo offensive line is doing a great job getting to that second level, not allowing him to affect the play. On the ground again. Yeah, Three yard gain this know. time, Carroll. Come to the near side, gets knocked down at the 45-yard line. As soon as I say that, then he gets in on a tackle because Jeffrey Jones doesn't get inside and seal him. He had great position on him, doesn't seal him. He actually pushes him towards the run to help out the tackle. Javon Ferguson and the coach is telling us what makes him so special 
is really his just enthusiasm for the game. One of those guys that loves to be out there, practices so hard, and it just translates to the game. When you practice that hard, you play that hard, and he's all over the field. Tuioti with plenty of time, surveying the field from the 50, uncorks one. He's got a man, it's complete. Lilly cuts back to the inside and knocked down at the 17 yard line. But Tuioti had the whole field there to just sit back and find a guy to break open. He did, it it's, it's, goes against what you, what you talk about. So he's gonna roll away and throw back across the field. This was designed, you see there, the over route coming from Lilly. He's coming all the way across the field, and he just waits, and then he uncorks a laser right on the money. Great throw and catch. New career high for Tuioti, 341 yards through the air. They go on the ground here. No, he keeps it. Oh, and he lost it. It's a fumble, and he's able to get back on it before Richardson could come up with it. Initially, they had me faked out well, he on was, the zone he was, read. It was an RPO, so right here, he's going to pull it and throw it to Jeffrey Jones who's running up the seam right here, and it just slips out of his hand. He had him, he had the receiver open in the middle of the field going to the end zone. That would have been a huge play right there. And great job of getting back and getting on the football. Loss of eight, so second and 18. Davis stopped, a flag comes out. Ferguson all over that one, stopping Davis for no gain. Ferguson in this game last year, 22 tackles, career high. And a sack. Two sacks, don't short them. Just, just to get it in there. Defense, number 88, at the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Oh, that's a, that's a killer right there, Brad. You well, play solid defense, you get a break, QB drops it when he has a guy open. That was gonna be third and 17. They ran up the middle for maybe a yard on second and 18. That's going to be an automatic first down. They've got the ball in the 11, so they can't get a first down without scoring a touchdown here. Vigilance in the backfield. He's going to get to carry here. He's got some room. Stop just short of the goal line. Davon Vigilant from Compton, California. And you get a look at what, what you can bring in. All out Tyrone Jones, where you have that little burst, smaller guy. Quick, explosive, but watch him plant the left foot and turn up inside and can smell the end zone and comes up just short. He's in the backfield now to Tuyote's left. They look over to the sideline, see if they're gonna change the play. Vigilant with a chance to get in. He reaches across, touchdown on the field. Touchdown. How about that? You, you reward the guy who made the nice run to get it down. A call from the official on the near sideline, and you couldn't tell from our vantage point whether a knee was on the ground. He extended the ball late. And the call in the field is touchdown, 54-38. The Lobo's starting to pull away here in the fourth quarter. And you go back to that play where Tuioti drops the ball as he's trying to throw it to Jeffrey Jones. That would have been an opportunity for the Aggies, but they weren't able to get to it. He's still off the ground. He puts his hand down to keep himself off the ground. Watch him put his left hand down to hold himself up and then stretches the ball out. How bad did he want that score? They are gonna take a look at this as the officials are heading over. Well, he wanted it bad from the play Watch before. Him. He breaks the plane. The question is, where is his right knee? But watch right there. He's still up. He puts his hand down on the ground to hold himself up. Number of looks here. Again, the right knee is the closest one to the ground. The hand is there. Is the knee down there before he extends it? That's what they're going to have to determine. As fans know, undisputable video evidence is what they are looking for here. really just hard to tell said when, when the knee down. touches the ground right is it is it's still up there right there it's, but where's the ball because when he when he extends the ball it's over the entire ball's out over when he extends it and all let's do is break the plane 
After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Touchdown, Lobos. So stands means there's no nothing to change it, right? Right. No better look. Couldn't overturn it. Absolutely. Vigilant with the touchdown. He wanted it. The one-yard <laughs> plunge into the end zone. Shelly on for the extra point. The punter, Tyson Dyer, is the holder. Jared Enrico is the snapper. So he puts it up and in. 55-38. The Lobos taking advantage here. They find the end zone again. Today's game summary brought to you by Red Lobster. A lot of points, a lot of numbers up there said. The yards have been a plenty, and the Lobos are starting to surge ahead. They are. And good defense. Solid play, and it seems like Tavaka Tuioti is, is really just kind of settled in to what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? It, it, he looks comfortable. Offensively, they look comfortable. And Joe Daly has done an outstanding job of, of really just managing the calls for him and calling this game, allowing him to go out and be the dynamic player that he is. Coach Joe Daly, first year offensive coordinator for the Lobos. And he came over from Liberty. And he told us yesterday, with Tuioti, hasn't had that many reps with everything. He can handle everything physically. But for today's game, he's going to limit it, know what he does well, and really hone in on that kind of stuff. Right, and, that's, and they'll continue to grow together. What a combo of those two together. Absolutely. And the weapons, not only in the backfield, but on the outside, a tight end. There's a lot of pieces to the puzzle here, and they're all clicking today. There was some time here where you had maybe two two good receivers on this roster, two guys that you could actually count on to go run disciplined, solid routes, and they look like they have a number of guys that can get it done. Nicholson with the catch. He's got enough for the first down and more out to the 43-yard line. Alex Hart on the tackle, and as we're saying all this, there's still over 10 minutes to go in this game. We've seen how quickly New Mexico State can strike. It's the air raid offense. They are no stranger to going a million miles an hour and, and getting a ton of plays off. And right now, this drive, nice gain on the first play, and here they go again. Nicholson again, another catch. He's already got two touchdowns this time. Steps out of bounds on the far side. Not quite enough for a first down. I beg your pardon, he does pick up the first down. And they, too, have a number of receivers that can get it done on the other side for the Aggies. I mean, both these teams loaded with guys that can run good routes, get open, catch the ball. Huntley that time could not make the catch. The defense was, was closing in on him there. Not sure how much he'd come up with. James Lewis was right there to make the tackle, but Incomplete pass. Stops the clock with 9.51 to go. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that clock for the Aggies fans here. Go to Gibson up the middle. And a big chunk play there on the run up the middle. It didn't look like there was much. Picks up five or six. Yeah, he hit it downhill and quick. Didn't waste a lot of time. He's got a lot of young experienced players back there in the secondary, especially in the middle of the field with your safeties where you've had some injuries. Aggies go empty. It's complete to Gibson. Thought he might go. Got tackled there from behind. But Christian Gibson out of the backfield here. You get him matched up against a safety that hasn't covered much. Jarek Reed able to make that play. Gibson again here, off the left side. Gets a couple of yards there. Said you'd think with 93 points on the board that maybe this is the highest scoring game in the Rio Grande's history. You've got 110 Rio Grande contests between these two schools. In 1917, 110 to three was the final score. As Adkins, Going for the sticks on the far side. 
Scoots out of bounds. It looks to be just shy, but 113 points is the combined points in this series from one from 1917. That's uh, pretty incredible. We do have eight minutes left. I know we do. So, so let's look out. Giddy up. Let's get going. Look out all time scoring record. Huntley this time. Still staying on his feet. No quit in him there. Thought he might go down, but able to get inside the 10. Aggies on the doorstep again. Metro State has had nine different receivers catch a pass today. Nine different guys. Well, it's, it's the type of offense where Atkins doesn't have to favor one guy. There's weapons all over the field. He's going to take off and run here. Reed in on the tackle, but Atkins there sliding down. He does have two rushing touchdowns in this one. Those both came on zone reads, not scrambled plays. It's a good job of letting up <laughs> by the Lobo defenders. Not breathing any more life into this drive. Empty set here for Adkins. Goes over the middle. Touchdown, New Mexico State. What a throw and catch that was. In traffic to Huntley. Get the double gut blitz. So the middle of the field is empty. No help. And that's what makes him so versatile. Is his ability to run routes and catch the ball in traffic. But look at this throw right down the middle. They're bringing pressure inside. And just misses the hand of Alex Hart. Who starts to come and then falls back. Well, that's a great catch in traffic. Extra point is up and in. The Aggies able to answer after going down 17. They have trimmed it to 10. Stay with us. 55-45 with 7.37 to go here. Jason Huntley with his first touchdown on the ground finished that drive off. He also has one through the air receiving. 10 plays, 75 yards. It never takes the Aggies long to find the end zone. Two minutes and 49 seconds on that scoring drive. And one of their studs coming through, and Atkins with a terrific throw in a tiny window to stick that slant in there for the touchdown. Brown pops one up to the far side, and they let that go out of bounds. So there is the flag. They'll have the ball at the 35-yard line. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. Here's today's know how for all brought to you by Napa and it's the explosive plays. They got a lot of big weapons and they've been going deep here, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Yeah, and, and a lot of catch and runs, which are the quarterback's friend, best friend. And then you throw it over the top of guys as well. You love these though, the quick catch and run after a five yard throw and your guy takes it 50 yards. But look at the shots at your quarterback here, Tabaka Tuoti's throwing. I mean, the kid is is special. And Coach Davey, what did he say to us? If he plays like he's played the last couple weeks in practice. He said we we're going to be in for a show. And that's exactly what we've got from Tuioti in this one. He has been impressive. And again, they in spring ball, he was the guy. And then he missed some time during fall camp. And so he wasn't ready to be the guy at the beginning of the season. Third, week four, third game for the Lobos. And he definitely looks like the guy today. He does, and I think this is what every, everyone's been waiting for, right? The Tabaka shell, bring it. He's delivered so far in this one, 7.03 to go. We've got an even 100 points on the scoreboard here between these two teams. Davis, he's been a workhorse today. We got a timeout here in New Mexico State. They're trying to save some of the time, although the clock is still running right now. They're going to probably put some more time on the clock based on when that timeout was called by the Aggies and Coach Martin. Tuoti's 15 of 26, 341 yards. Talking things over on the sideline. 
as they get set up. A steady diet of Amari Davis. Two touchdowns, a lot of the dirty work up front, and credit this offensive line. 23 carries is a new career high for Davis, but a lot of help from the big guys up front. Mosley, Savala, Stapley, Jankowiak, and Saltis, the starting five up front for the Lobos. And there's their O-line coach and the acting head coach. Saka Tuatelli, done a terrific job here. It's a difficult situation, a medical incident for Bob Davey after the Sam Houston State game. And so Saga has taken over here. And what did you tell us yesterday? Just keep the lights on. This is a machine here. <laughs> Everything is so organized. I have some decisions oh, to make, but for the most part, but everybody you, knows their job. You have to give Coach Davey a lot of credit for that, right? By allowing his coaches to do their jobs, they're ready when these kind of things present themselves. And for Lobos fans, Coach Davies should be back next week. Full go. This one picked off. It's what the Aggies needed. Perkins on the return. Avoids one man. Still on his feet, now thrown down. But Austin Perkins coming through. Finally, the defense able to get a turnover. Well, they're trying to throw the seam route. And if you, if you throw the seam, it's got to be up and down, unless you know there's no help in the middle. Within 18 to 22 yards, this goes extremely too long. But they're trying to throw it right up the seam, and the receiver stops running. He starts to settle down right there, and he throws it up the seam. Still too far down the field. That's got to be up and down within 18 yards, 18 to 20 yards at most. Huntley. Gets to the edge, turns on the Jets, and then steps out of bounds, stopping quickly there. And that's just what they needed. You're talking about a defense for the Aggies that have only caused one turnover coming into this game. Austin Perkins had a pick last week against Ryan Agnew of San Diego State. They could not turn it into points. Let's see if they can do that here today. There are only two interceptions of the season. Oh, he just... Nicholson with a completed pass there. Martin on the coverage and the tackle. He missed Navion Mitchell on a post route. Wide open, missed him. Under six minutes to go here, second and six. They're going quickly. They still have time said, even though Plenty they missed Mitchell. Plenty of time. Receiver open over the middle. Lottie inside the five and down to the four. Cameron Miller and Reed in on the tackle. The poise of Adkins has been impressive throughout this game. I know he threw a pick to start, but since then. I mean, he's been, been outstanding. Stands in there and makes throws. Adkins shuffling the feet and is going to fire it out of the back of the end zone and live to play another day. Good, good pressure by Brandon Shook, continuing to work. Best thing about that is you don't take a sack, you don't run it, you stop the clock with the throwaway. 527, where the clock's at, empty backfield here, just Atkins. He's gonna keep it himself. Third touchdown of the game, Josh Atkins. Uh oh. The QB run. Trims the lead to four right now with the PA coming up. And it started on defense with Perkins, and they turn it into points. And it's an outstanding job by the Aggies, continuing the fight. Brown with the PAT. It's good, 55-52. Are you kidding me with this one? Just when you thought the Aggies were down, they bounce back, an interception and a touchdown. There's the two men responsible for the last touchdown. Austin Perkins with his second INT of the season, setting up the offense. And there's the scoring drive, five plays, 51 yards, ending with a Josh Adkins four yard touchdown run third rushing touchdown of the game. 
And to go along Aggie with three Band's passing. loving it. To go along with three passing. Six total, is that good? That's pretty good, right? The Aggies have bounced back here in the fourth quarter. They were down, but not out. I mean, that's a brilliant throw and catch right there in traffic. And then the interception. Takeaway, which leads to points. A long drive. QB calling his own number for the six touchdowns he's responsible for. In a typical Rio Grande rivalry game, right? A ton of momentum swings, points all over the board. Back and forth we go. This one has been exciting. And we've got 522 left in a three-point game. Tuioti keeps it into the secondary. And Perkins and Ferguson knock him down, but not before he gets a first down. It's a good first down play, keeping him honest. He's able to pull it and explode up inside. Good vision. Still staying away from the big shots. Marcus Williams, the tight end, with a nice block on Richardson that time. To spring to Yodi. Under five minutes to go. Gotta let this play clock go down as long as you can for the snap. Toyota keeps it again, again, able to get a nice run going there. Perkins able to bring him down, but that keeps the clock running and the chains moving. Grimacing a little bit there after back-to-back -back runs. Now he's looking over to the sideline. He's just coming over to get the play here, not coming out of the game. You'll watch him run this clock all the way down inside of five seconds. Take as much time as possible between each and every snap. This is a give to Carroll into the line and forward for about four yards. Keeps the clock moving, approaching four minutes. Carol, a redshirt sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Big touchdown run against Notre Dame a week ago. Showed off his speed against the Irish. Who've got some speed of their own. <laughs> On their defense, indeed, they do. Ball at the 42-yard line. Carol moves to the left side of Tuioti. Play clock's at five. And Ferguson wrapped him up but couldn't bring him down. And finally, Jason Simmons takes him down for a loss. And the Aggies defense has showed up here back-to-back -back drives when they needed it. Can they get a final blow here? Yeah, but here's, here's the thing. Understand the situation. Once you get wrapped up here, go down right there. Don't lose any more yards. Go down. It's hard as, a, as an athlete to, to want to do that. And, and not coming down on him for it, but if you can mentally understand the situation, don't give up more yards than you have to. Ferguson is an animal out there, middle linebacker. Fifth year senior captain from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And just an absolute nose for the football, great instincts. And it looks like a timeout. Tuatele calling the timeout for the Lobos as the play clock was nearing zero. They still have one left, but 2.43 to go on the clock. Third and 15. And how aggressive do you want to be here? If you're the Lobos, you've got a quarterback well, who threw an interception the last time he put it in the air. Well, I feel like that's a that, that route concept was, was not a good one. It was a dead concept. You had soft coverage on a slot guy, and you're trying to throw a seam route to him. you got to throw that outside wide, right? Outside of the boundary. I'd say here, What's been good for him? The dig routes. Maybe backside dig, get that up to 15 if you can hold up in the protection long enough. Let's go down on the sidelines to Mark Stout. I feel like this is a good spot to just say, hey, about Frank Spaziano, the defensive coordinator of the Aggies, who at 72 years old is a football lifer. And he told us, look, coaching is a way of life. It's not a job. This is my lifestyle. This is what I do. See if his defense can come up with a big stop third and 15. Can they get the offense back on the field? 
Tuyoti throws it to the sticks. It looks like they got the first down. Ume with a ridiculous catch and able to turn and get that extra yard to move the sticks. Wow. Big time throw right there from Tuyoti. And, and a good hands catch on the little stick post, skinny post right across the middle. And he's able to reach it out. The ball never touches his body. That's all hand strength right here, folks. Look at this. And then he reaches out to get the first down. Great effort. You by mentioned Ume. Carroll kind of not knowing the time and situation. That was the exact opposite. Ume knew exactly where he needed to be. He caught it, knew he was short, and had to lunge for it and got there. What a critical play that was in this one. New Mexico able to pick up the first down. New Mexico State now with only one timeout left. You gotta, you gotta love this, the receiving core and their ability to go attack the football. I mean, that's one area that they have improved in this program is having multiple guys. Multiple, look at that. That's just a hands catch, strong, strong hands catch. Anselm Ume, five foot 11, 176 pounds. Redshirt junior from Bellflower, California. Coming up huge right here for the Lobos at a critical juncture in this game. They are checking on the spot here. From our angles, it did appear that he got the ball extended across the line of the game. Get up to the 40, or excuse me, the 36. He's down there. Yeah, but where's the ball? He, the ball's on Inside his front the half. Right, yeah. So he needs to get to the 36. Ball's on his front half. Based on that replay set, I would say that the officials have it spotted correctly here. Yeah. I would I would concur. Crucial juncture here. You're going to want to double check that. Yes, so absolutely. definitely the time to. You know, look at this one again and just make sure. Again, it was third and 15. If he's short, he would bring up a fourth and less than one, depending on where they spot the football. The 36 and a half, 37 yard line. It could be a long field goal. It could be go for it on fourth down. But as the call on the field is a first down. And nothing we've seen from a replay standpoint would lead us to believe that they're gonna change that. No, nothing at all. Anytime they take a long time down there, it's, uh... it does make you <laughs> worry, though, that they could change it. If you're the Lobos, you're worried. If you're the Aggies, you're saying, yeah, move it back. Give right. us a fourth and fourth and inches and let's see if we can stop them. How about the response, though, by the Lobo offense? Uh, you, you throw a pick, you get the other get your get the Aggies back in the ball game, but you run a few plays offensively on the ground. You're rushing, getting first downs and all of a sudden you have to come up with a third and 15. And, and you're able to convert. And you're able to convert. After further review, the ruling on the field is a fourth down, short of the line to gain. Well, we swung and we missed there, set on that one. We I, thought I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully still disagree. I mean a huge play. I thought the last play was big. Now it's going to be fourth and short. Let's see where they move it back to. I don't know how there was enough there to tell you that he didn't get it, right? I mean, from an official standpoint, it has to be indisputable. They moved it back about a half a yard. The ball is placed closer to the 37 than the 36 here. Fourth and less than one. The Lobos are going for it. Tuioti in the shotgun. Davis to his right. 220 and counting here on the clock. To give to Davis. Over the pile. He's on his feet. He got the first down. He's down to the 20 yard line. Lobos pick up the first down. And you know it's short yardage. Everyone's submarining up front. Getting down low, trying to bottle it up. But look at the athleticism. Lee Darner takes that to the house. Over the top. Komode Tofi is down. He's the one that made the tackle, number five. And they're helping him off the field. New career high for Davis, 120 yards rushing. 
Watch, watch to OT right here as well when he hands the ball off. Watch your quarterback. Watch this guy right here. Watch what he does to the crashing in. Gets a piece of Richardson <laughs> there. Enough. Come on. That's your QB who's missed games from being hurt. How bad does that kid want to win games? Well, if he's reading his keys on his own read and Richardson's crashing down right that, isn't that a pull set? Not on a short yardage, dude. Give it to your back, Davis. <laughs> Give it to your back. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Sorry. One timeout left for the Aggies. Davis, again, working his way through traffic, still on his feet, and they're just burning clock here, not just gaining yards. The big offensive lineman pushing him forward. If they've got a first down, that might do it. What an effort here for the Lobos trying to seal this one. Turned into a rugby scrum. And it, and it stems from just trying to strip the ball, right? Yeah, they got to get the ball back. They got to get the ball back. So that's why you're, you're seeing all the extra. But they're holding them up. First guy hold them up. And the next few guys try to rip it out. Try to get hands on it. You see he's got both clubs on it. I'm not even letting it go. And it just adds to his totals for this afternoon. Chris Estrella, 79, back up left guard. Got a good push on there as Davis goes over the top for a couple of yards. And the final timeout being used here by the Aggies. Said we're running out of time here, but as we went through this week and learned about the rivalry from both sides of it, one of the cooler things that we found out was from Coach Martin. And he told us, if somebody screws up during the off-season, winter conditioning, spring ball, say they're late to class, late to a meeting, don't make weight if they have designed weight they need to hit, the punishment is for a day to wear a Lobos jersey or a UTEP Miners jersey around campus. You got to go to class that way. And it, his message was, if you're not with us, then you're part of the enemy. You, they're the enemy, and you're working with them if you're not showing up to class on time. I thought it was awesome. Right, by making them better, by you not showing up, doing your thing, you're making our rivals better. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I'd never heard of that before. I'm, I'm, I'm all not sure for, where they got the opposing team's I'm, jerseys. I'm but. all for accountability for young, young guys and young ladies as well, athletes. I'm all for accountability. A big part of college athletics. Coach Martin knows they're out of timeouts, and right now, victory formation for New Mexico. They kneel it, and they're going to try and burn the rest of the clock off here. A decisive advantage in the Rio Grande rivalry. With the win today, they're going to improve to 72, 33, and 5 in this series, the Lobos. So they have dominated, but the Aggies have won two of the last three. So the Lobos know they needed a response. They got it here today. And it's gone streaking. The Aggies two, now the Lobos two. Big time game. New Mexico with the win, 55-52. Teams on the field here, the final seconds ticking off of this one. Tabaka Tuioti with a big game, but said overall this Lobo team after getting it pick six to start the game, they took a lot of punches, but they were able to stand in there and finally get the win. They did, to go down, and, and the way the Aggies were executing offensively there for a while, you thought this was going to be a really, really long day for the Lobos, and then they were able to just kind of get their stride going. And you, you felt like Coach Daly and Tavaka Tuioti got in rhythm, and things started working. Tuioti today had a phenomenal game. It was his first start of the season. He was injured last year after a couple of starts. He really got going. This is the player that Coach Bob Davey thinks he could be each and every week. And, and he's a very special player, but now you throw all these big, fast, good, route-running wide receivers in the mix. And I tell you what, man, if these guys continue to work at the pace they're working at, I love, love, what Coach Joe Daly's doing offensively here. It's fun to watch. Career high, 355 yards passing. And now we go down to Mark Stout, who's with the game-winning quarterback. 
Great numbers, all that aside. Did you have a little fun today? Yes, sir. You know, it was good to be back on the field with my teammates, um, especially to get this uh, win. So, you know, it's a good win for us. We've heard about you being in rhythm yeah, and practice and finally getting things going. Is that how it felt as well today? Yeah, you know, it, it was a rough start for us. But uh, yeah. towards the towards the end of the game, we started to pick up, you know, find our rhythm. So we did a great job. Hey, do you have a favorite throw? Is it out of the pocket? Is it? What, what do you like to do best? Um, just try to get the ball in a playmaker's hands. That's all it is. Well, you got plenty of those. Last thing, tell me about Amari Davis. And, you know, he had a career high, too, today in yards. Man, he's a stud. You know, all of our running backs, you know, they can move the ball. All I got to do is just give them and then they just make a play with it. Last thing, this rivalry. Um, you know, if you're here in New Mexico, people get it. What does it mean to you now that you guys came out with a win? You know, it's a great win for our community and the guys. All it is now is the rest of the season and focus on next week. Good luck and keep it going. Thank you. Thank you so much.